This free range productions program is presented for information purposes only. The opinions expressed may not necessarily reflect the opinions of the hosts, free range productions, its principal supporters or staff. Viewers are directed to use their own research and discernment with respect to any information presented here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. This is Gail of Gaia, and this is Free Range. I have a, a group of people here today that I'm very excited about to have. Um, they're very gifted individuals. As Well, we all are, but some people have their gifts um, more in motion, you might say. So anyway, uh, we have um, a psychic, intuitive, and empath. We have um, we have two psychic, intuitive empaths and spiritual warriors. I would venture to guess as well. And we also have an intuitive empath. And we will start with Ida because she is ladies first, I guess. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> And just say a little bit about yourself, and then I'll go to um, uh, Sean, and then I'll go to um, Christopher. So this should be a very interesting and a very fun uh, session for you all, uh, listeners. And you will learn some things that um, maybe you didn't know before or whatever. But uh, I think you'll really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, go, Ida. Okay, my name is Ida Farhat. Um, I don't really know what to say about myself. I don't really like to use labels of anything, but I am uh, gifted. I am a spirit or an empath, and I do have um, in highly intuitive abilities. Um, I had my awakening in 2011 and have become aware of off-world beings. Um, I've dealt with my lab, Super Soldier, um experiences and that's about it i don't want to say too much it, yeah well that's that's funny, that's funny. That. yeah and um that's wonderful okay sean how about you let tell us about yourself a little bit and um and just take it from there <laughs> um sorry to put I'm you on the spot <laughs> uh, things that i couldn't describe in a short amount of time but uh um you're very gifted. You're very gifted. Uh, yeah. Um, like people want to use psychic and stuff, but I like go beyond the words of that. I like programming the body to its greatest self and in mind, spirit, ocean, um, and physical, and then uh, pushing past limits and learning how to read other people and their DNA and spirit has gone into that in a building block of different abilities of accumulation for a grander experience that I'm having and uh, bringing to others as well that they can find within themselves because everyone can learn how to do this. Everyone can be psychic. Uh, it takes practice and there's different abilities in it. So it's, it's not like just one thing at all. And then like everyone that most people don't open their presence. So I like help them to find out what they have within and, and when they open it, it flows open dramatically and fun and they have a great experience and even helps in this horrible time where so many people are like, why am I here? Why do I want to be here? And then a lot of people don't want to be here. And then it gives them the gift of greater expression of what life is in this earth. And so uh, I enjoy helping people want to be here longer and uh, to express their goals and what well, the purpose uh and add that to the equation which makes this whole planet um better and as we're bringing it heaven and closer to this realm. that's awesome and so basically you you help people bring their gifts forward uh, is how um, i, I understand it. that's what i'm understanding from you anyway describing yeah. it is reality warper oh okay okay well i i don't know what labels to use or or, or you know what you feel comfortable with that's why i you know kind of let you explain about yourself so it's your turn chris <laughs> all right you know what, what i usually do is uh, uh help people uh, uh, with uh, removing negative attachments and entities from their property and themselves uh, I notice when that's done and then the, the true them can come out pretty much and more of uh, who they really are can come out. Uh, sometimes people don't even realize that uh, anything has been wrong 
and that their their personality has been uh, completely subjugated. And uh, uh, once I remove that entity, uh, they see a whole new person. They see this complete changeover. And what they're really doing is bringing themselves more into their own power at that point. And then I show them how to how to keep their home. Uh, cleansed. And it usually stays that way. For most of the people I work with, it stays that way. There's been a few targeted individuals that it, it, it reoccurs uh, periodically, but uh, um, you know, we have to fight stuff off every now and again. We get blowback every now and again from, uh, from uh, negative entities that get a little butthurt that, uh, that I've uh, kicked them out of somebody's home or something. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but most of people don't understand you can actually get rid of them. The young people have been programmed to believe that, oh, no, it's impossible to get rid of something like that. No, it's actually quite easy to get, uh, get rid of it when you, if you operate on a certain you know, energetic wave. Like, and you don't even have to have heightened abilities like myself. Uh, you can uh, you can keep it out with intention. You can uh, reaffirm your sovereign space in your home, and make your space untouchable uh, to them. Basically, part the seas pretty much away from how they can come how they can come in with a, a, a basically a sovereignty declaration. That's how that's how I operate. Yes, I saw, and on your website you have a whole thing about that type of thing that people can go to and download. Correct? <clears throat> yeah, I have revocations, wards, audits. Uh, all those on uh, on our website uh, to basically uh, uncouple uh, people from uh, different entanglements, either genetic or spiritual. P- uh, people also don't realize they get a lot from lineage, and they get yeah, a lot. Yeah, that of- always surprised me. I, I had no idea that your you know, you know, your generations behind you actually contributed to some of the problems you may have today. Mm-hmm. Either with personality or there's another layer to it, whatever past lives they had entered into their genetic memory, which then oh, yeah, came together. Uh, I found out I had uh, uh, several codes I had to get rid of because in one lifetime, my father was uh, was a serial killer and then my mother was his his victim. So I got both of those those sets of codes. So I had to get rid of uh Get rid of those, and it freed up a lot of space for more uh, valuable information to come in at that point. Oh, that's awesome, and that's an awesome way of putting it. Now, I know, uh, uh, Sean, you have a web page too that um, the Psychic League and um, or Psionic League, isn't it? What, 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 why don't you say it for people? So, and each of you, I would like you to send me your links because I'll put them in the description of this video so people can look you up when when i put this up and that includes you too uh ida because you have a have just started a new channel which um you would yeah. want to and i would love to have you all on as guests by the way sean and chris <laughs> and gail definitely i um yeah i appreciate that yeah i'm just coming out of my if you want to call it dark night of the soul or my um i've been alone for the past three years, just really sitting still and having to have a look at a lot of things um, that, that I experienced during my awakening. And so I'm just starting to build my confidence back up. Mm-hmm. I'm a pretty outgoing, fun, loving person. But when I get on camera for some reason, I kind of. That's pretty you know, typical stage fright. <laughs> yeah. I used to be. And, I, I, and, and I don't like to, again, I mean, I, I appreciate other people. I mean, people need to understand, have a better understanding if, you know, by, by using these labels to explain gifts and so forth. But I've been doing certain stuff my whole life and I don't really see them see the, my, what I do as, um, I think it's just <laughs> a normal, it's a, a, abilities everybody has. And most of the time, I'm not even aware until I'm under either under stress or for some reason, like stress or anger will bring them out even more. In me. Well, I think when you're working with intuitive abilities that there's a tendency for the mind to get in the way. Um, uh, you start analyzing things with, in, with your uh, logical brain rather than your um, creative brain. And that's because we've been trained that way. Yeah, sure. um, there, there was something that I had sent to each of you about another woman who had seen some things um, going on in Australia. And I was just wondering if you had a chance to see it and if you might like to comment on it and tell us anything that you might have seen or um, know is happening, if you don't mind. Anyone? 
can go oh, for yeah. might not yeah go ahead i'm sorry chris oh i'm sorry yeah yeah oh uh, yeah well, i was listening to that i was working on a bunch of our orgone pieces this morning and uh, you sent me uh, this uh, clip and i began to uh, listen to this as i was working on stuff and uh, most of what she was talking about was actually true about how uh, she saw the different layers underground where the reptilians and the archontic forces siphon energy that way where people can walk basically along the path where people can walk and I, I discovered this a couple of years ago with, uh, I call them energy collectors, where um, they could be they could be churches, they could be temples, graveyards, any of these, these places where people can actually walk in and these beings are, are siphoning the energy through underground. I'm not saying every underground being is actually bad like that. I'm just saying that there are these uh, areas, usually over like earth, what I call earth chakra points uh, that they basically bastardize and turn into energy collection sites, uh, kind of like an adapter. Um, there was something that was said just recently by something too, uh, and it, it explains a lot. And that is that this energy siphoning that they do in these different areas are, are part of what keeps people in this, what you might call a dream spell for those of us who say, well, why don't these people see this? Why can't we wake them up? That, that kind of thing. And they're actually having their energy sucked up, uh, you know, affecting their life force. Would you? Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. They're in this spell where they can't, literally can't see it or comprehend what is actually going on. You know, I, I've never had the spell fully on me, but I have had a, a, like a, a, I would say more of a waking, awakening process. I was a psychic medium prior to me getting hurt in 2009, but I had a near death experience that then knocked my abilities into a complete overdrive and uh, it got me uh, basically brought me up to the level I'm at now. But basically you think, you know, you're dealing with a whole amount of information that's right here, but it's really now it's here. Now it's here. And you. <laughs> wow. Well, does anybody else want to comment on that? Sean, how about you? The Australia thing, or what did he say? Uh, you know, what are you saying? The Australia, whatever you're thinking is going on right now. And why, why are people in this, uh, some people call it a dream spell or a, a spell, period. You know, where they don't, they're not, they don't even want to hear about certain things. Uh, a lot of reasons. Uh, we're playing in one of the top hardest difficulty games, uh, Layer Surface Realms. Um, that exists in this multiverse. It's kind of a culmination root chakra for all experiences to get resolved in, in an ultimate uh, chess game that determines the outcome of all chess games. So it's where most of the big players will be chess playing uh, to try to control. And then there'll be like a huge resiliency thing that is happening that is teaching our higher selves and many different versions of us, how to become immune and resilient to all the different layers in chess games and mastery of different abilities in positive and negative abuse. And then the, the light and the dark going back and forth and having this huge evolutionary point that will affect the rest of the multiverse. So it's like, to give you an example on that, pretty much any, if I were to look at any other realms or games that are even more difficult, all of them are hell realms. So, hell uh, realms. <laughs> all of them are hell realms. Is that yeah, what you all said? of them are quarantine realms that like uh, had like some you know, so like either quarantine realms that are made naturally or become that way. Uh, they had the purpose to compress dark things down and resolve it, and then how that they see a value over time. If it became it, it had something valuable that a lot of things invaded. And then Earth's like, well, well I guess this is a quarantine realm now. And then uh, she soups it up to make it like something that like since all the dark players want to be there, that she'll compress them there. And then everything else, uh, it will be like a if she sees other things that need to um, not be in the place that they are, she'll either send them there. She has uh, quite a few of these for different purposes and she can make more and a bunch of other planets will bilocate their realms here and interact with her tree of life for the realms. And like, are you, are you talking about Lady Gaia? Are you, are you talking about yeah. Terra? Terra? Yeah. Terra? I Gaia. call her Lady Gaia. All the names. She like. Well, she has well I understand. Is it true that Gaia is Mars? No, it's not. And Terra is 
No, that's a lie. I've looked it up. I've researched it. Interesting. I, um, I mean, I've everyone heard is everyone. Is, hmm? I'm sorry. But, like, ultimately having defined uh, identity in different incarnations, but everyone is one, technically going back to source. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, I wouldn't call myself that. Gale of Mars, okay? Let me put it that way. So that definitely does not come into my realm as far as um, that type of... I'm talking about Mother Earth when I say Gaia. That's I, exactly I, uh, what I mean. Yeah, I believe, you know, the reason pe- people also pick up a multitude of energies here as well. Earth seems to be this uh, epicenter of uh, bringing in fragments from all over the uh, universe, multiverse dimensions, and those quarantine rooms you were talking about, uh, uh, Sean, that actually, I, uh, I, re- I recognize that. I've actually bilocated into some of these areas where some of these darker beings operate from, and uh, they, uh, it's actually uh, quite interesting. You know, I did, uh, uh, what, what is actually interesting, I did see one of these little quarantine bubbles that I thought was Mars, uh, that it actually had some of the topography of Mars, but it was actually, they were using some of the energy from there to actually create a, a quarantine type of uh, realm like what you were talking about, uh, Sean. I've bilocated to that, and I've seen other, uh, like, holographic realms, I call it, where you know, they embody like a certain type of, how can I put it, certain type of emotion or certain type of like whatever mm-hmm. energy they're trying to draw Absolutely. out emotionally. I've seen that too. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and I've always seen that. Seven yeah. deadly sins, all that, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, positive and negative emotions. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly, and I've I bilocated to those. Those are tricky. I've come across what, what's called, I call them soul code repositories that these, these beings like to keep in these like almost like arena-shaped uh, type of buildings. And they keep them, uh, from my visual perception, it looks almost like drawers, like a card catalog in a way. And uh, whenever I find these things, I collapse them because uh, there's soul fragments, shards, and, and actual whole people in there that I end up getting uh, getting out of there. Like a Colosseum kind of thing? Back from that. Huh? Like a Colosseum kind of thing? Yeah, it's like a Colosseum-sized uh, uh, room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does it like pit things against each other in it? Yeah, exactly. Like, and there's usually demons <laughs> that guard these, these places or, and uh, wow. Rico and other beings that guard these places. And I and, I, and a friend of ours in... Uh, London will sometimes break into these places and just collapse them, you know, before they can really uh, do anything. And then it flattens out and it and it, it breaks the quarantine basically, and, it, and uh, uh, the Earth Mother basically balances the rest of it out. And we flood it through uh, full of uh, crater light and everything to balance it out. But you can collapse these bubbles. It takes some doing, but you can collapse them. That's awesome. Yeah, Earth <laughs> likes to take them back. Um, Mm-hmm. They, the, the, a lot of negative forces love fighting, so they're gonna make them and keep making more of them. So Earth is like, oh, I know why you want this, and how it, like determines. But like the, I guess the negative part of it is energy harvesting and like forcing things to fight against their will. And instead of it actually being a nice competition where like things go vie for power and and in the dark spectrum, and then that form of control because. Earth still like hires some of the arch beings to maintain control of the lesser beings. And if depending on how nice they work with her um, and also the older authorities seem to do the, be the, the best to work with though. They constantly get their So they've been fractured because they've been here for there for so long that uh, they need healing themselves. Otherwise they get like insane. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, I've run into that too. We've got people, I, a person I work with in London, uh, our friend, uh, uh, his name's Surrender. I've worked with him a number of times. Uh, you know, we always go into these and uh, uh, we'll disguise ourselves and watch what goes on, how the place operates and everything. And then we, we end up just collapsing it in on itself. And the earth is like, oh, yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, I like that. You know? <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Well, yeah. where do you think we, we are at? Did you have something you wanted to say, Ida? Okay. No, I'm just listening. I know. It's fascinating. (laughs) I love to learn from them. Yes, same here. So, and so will our audience, I am sure. Um, What was I going to say now? Um, What about here in uh, the United States underneath, uh, well, say Washington, D.C., for example? (laughs) I would be surprised if there wasn't some type of something there. 
that's negative. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. When I, uh, when <laughs> Joanna and I went to Washington DC, I was there twice. I can't be there for an extended period because, uh, uh, what is known as the binary network is extremely strong there. And now, now of course, there's a stronger 5G single sing, signal there. But the last time I was there, I'm trying to think what year that was. I believe that was in 2017, I want to say, or 16. It was 16, I believe. And uh, we, we went there once, and the energy was so wretched in some parts, especially as you pr uh, approach the uh, Washington uh, Monument. Uh, we walked the entire length of the mall there, that, that, that long stretch yeah. you know, going wow, to yeah. uh, Washington Monument by the Smithsonian and everything there. We walked the entire thing and uh, went up to uh, uh, the uh, Washington Monument and noticed this big signal that was just being broadcast out through the, the, the top of it that was just massive. And also the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. That's the first time I encountered an Archontic uh, energy collector of that size. And it, um, where wow. in another dimension, in a pocket dimension, you have underneath the, the church is a cylindrical, like octagonal room that there's a beam sitting at the bottom drawing or set of beings drawing the energy from the worshipers. There's also on the top, there's another layer uh, up in the sky where they draw the energy out that way. So it goes above and below. And uh, when Joanna walked in there, she immediately got spiked with something in her feet, etherically, and I had to help uh, remove that. She couldn't walk, you know, so I had to uh -huh. remove that. And I noticed there's contracts that go along with walking in there. We had to revoke uh, all of those going in there. And uh, that's the first time we ra I ran into one of that size. Um, that, uh, that <laughs> Wouldn't surprise up. me in Washington. <laughs> well, can I, can I just say something real quick? You know, I grew of up course. in Maryland. I grew up oh. in Maryland in a place called Wheaton, Maryland. Now, um, Jay Parker, I don't know if y'all are familiar with him, but he's spoken about how anything with T-O-N at the end is a Illuminati code for them to let their other members know that they could find their people there. And I lived in downtown Silver Spring when I was, you know, and I had my awakening and moved into this apartment where all these anomalies were taking place. And it was called the Silverton, Silverton uh, condos. But I can wow. say, and yes, Chris, I, I, I mean, maybe I didn't feel it to the extent that you ha have your experiences, but I lived where like you could walk maybe 15 minutes and walk right across the DC line. And you literally can feel the difference from just crossing the line. Mm -hmm. Like the energy in DC is, and then the further you go in, like where the monuments and all that, it's it's heavy. It's like its own, I don't want to say world, but its own world. <laughs> <laughs> For lack of a better word. <laughs> really heavy, dense. Uh, That's you know, fascinating. And there's so many different beings and entities that, and it's very, a lot of dark, dark, yeah. I, I I've had oh, yeah. friends who've told me that about Washington D.C. when they went to speak yes. to some of the. Um, I mean, it's it's got a the senators or reps that. or whatever. You know, they 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 really felt that they were um, what, negative uh, what entities. Really uh, creepy is uh, I you know uh, Joanna's family used to live in uh, Newport News and uh, Carrollton and Hampton. You know, with the T.O.N. Hampton. at the uh, right. The, 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 that's fascinating, Ida. I didn't know that about Tun. Yeah, T.O.N. Uh, uh, we, uh, yep. we were there, and there's that giant base that's there in Newport News, right there on the bridge, right, right across the bridge there. And I have memories of uh, us being abducted and taking, taken to that particular base while we were actually staying there. And also the route from Virginia Beach to uh, Washington, D.C., uh, in between there where it's uh, Jamestown and uh, uh, New Yorktown, you know, where the old uh, the old uh, settlements and stuff are. I, I nicknamed that Harvester Alley because uh, uh, there's a, a, not only was there a lot of hauntings through the uh, the battlefields and everything there, but I mean, you had Harvester, what I call Harvester Spheres going through there. You had Archontic Forces, ghosts, everything in there. Uh, I, I nicknamed it Harvester Alley or the Gauntlet because it was just, the, there's a ton of stuff between Virginia Beach and D.C., right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Virginia Beach, too. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, definitely. New Jersey. When I lived in New Jersey, it was horrible. I mean, there's so many. Yeah. I'm I'm excited for, for 
you know, getting this planet cleaned up. Cleaned up. <laughs> oh my God, yes. It's happening though, isn't it? Can't you, can you address that at all? Um, how about you, Sean? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Do you so think, you were, uh, like, look over uh, in DC, well, I mean, we, then we can talk about Australia, but uh, right in the middle of it is a up, inverted pentagram with a broken um, arm, which is a, sin, a satanic uh, ritual symbology in a summoning, because, like, pentagrams are good for summoning portals and, like, the representation of man and when it's inverted it goes into play the top um the top in a regular pentagram the top would be a representing spirit ab above the four elements and when it's inverted it's putting the four uh, elements of the material world over spirit and then going into uh egoic um satanism and then when it's broken in one of the arms, it means that the summoning is uh, instead of a secure summer summoning within the, the sphere, it is summoning and then allowing it to flood out. So it's like a, a, a constant portal for demons to come in from a hell realm that then wow. over uh, flows through the city. Um, and this is known about in the satanic rituals uh, that people are afraid to go into. And then the different grid workings, because it's over a very powerful Native American point of control. And that going along with the Pentagon and some other places uh, around the area. Anyway, so there's that. And then the best thing for people to do is uh, lovingly detach from it. Because its goal is to in attach, uh, get, it's very grabby in attention and then get into people's senses and experience and um, overflow them and uh, become a constant mm, unresolvable game. So the goal for everyone is to lovingly detach from it and then unite with everyone else on the planet that's getting their energy stolen or harvested in the, the connecting grids of like the obelisk system and the road, all leads road, uh, all roads lead to Rome and all that, uh, the false grid work and detach from that and then get it to shrink because it's a giant parasite. And then uh, it, like everyone's detaching from it and you get everyone else united that's getting their energy stolen, detached in the spirit and we, we're constantly uniting to that so that it compresses down and it has to use up all its energy and to uh, try to steal more energy from other people, but more of it getting exposed and the methods of it stealing energy be resolved and become immune, which is the constant chess game of light and dark uh, becoming uh, more powerful in that spectrum. Um, and yeah, uh, it, it has a lot under it. Um, since it's summoning a lot of demons and things, when over a place of power, they like to uh, set up bases all the way down to the center of the earth because the place of power is like a beam of light that comes up from the core and even above the earth into the atmosphere and all that. So they're trying to take control of that and use that in harvesting for the power. And so it's got a lot of demons, a lot of Draco, uh, Alpha Draconis, um, some spiders. Uh, 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 well, that one is mostly Draco. Um, and then in the other realms, demons, and they're trying to anchor in, in uh, from the hell realm and keep that going. Uh, so... Yeah, detaching is the best way because it, it wants wants to grab attention. So if you can detach from it faster than it can attach, you can make it so it, it exists in your spectrum of awareness, but it doesn't take up the whole uh, veil or perception screen. And then you balance it with light as it like you bring back into awareness that it's not just a scary big thing that wants to attack you and control that it uh, is you, but it's like a uh, part of our own, uh, the universe and ourself in which it is in human amount of pain and compressed uh, undesirable aspects of the uh, universe. Um, and it will continue to be that until the chess game takes enough um, turn in earth awakening and uh, going fully into her power to where she can compress a lot of the dark uh, of the rest of the United States down to that place to where 99% uh, if if it gets to where it's it's a certain Draco faction and there's a big city and they're trying to expand and all that and it doesn't need to exist in the route it's like 
if you were to read things that are anchored in the reality out of the unseen of the cat, the Scrooge's cat box of what we can observe, what we can't observe and what we can uh, blink out of existence as, as we get fully into our reality warping and what can uh, in the chest move back and forward in time. It's like a three out of 10, but it takes a lot of energy to resolve. And it's the last chess game for the Draco on the, the earth of what they want to hold on to. So if, we get it to where 99% of the rest of the Draco in the United States are gone down to just being there. Um, then it will start to compress and then transmute and uh, enough people will have heart space turned on because they're already getting infiltrated with love uh, to where they're changing. And then the structure of it uh, has hierarchy over the rest of the Draco. So she sees a chess move in that being the last chess game for um U us because of what also the dark want same thing stuff with australia um but with uh, more more things so can, can i ask a question I'm sure sorry. go ahead yeah. no go go no, ahead i was gonna say what it what what do you think i mean where are we at with the draco uh <laughs> i was thinking along the same lines i was just gonna yeah, where, where are similar. we at with that guys like i mean you guys are you know more in the know of what's happening in higher dimensions. yeah most people don't see that most people wouldn't even know how to approach you know even what you're saying for that matter um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what uh, uh what i've seen though i've seen significant uh number reduction in dracos in the past uh, couple of years actually uh uh, thanks in part to the forest people, they've uh, they've done a great deal of uh, helping to to purge. It was like a like a few month period where they were just they just went after the uh, Draco. They were getting fed up with them, and uh, uh, I communicate with the forest people quite often, and uh, they usually keep me apprised of what's going on. But then I noticed that a lot of the Draco attacks that were hitting us and hitting other clients and everything uh, were significantly reduced after this. And uh, but they were more spread out. But I've also noticed that uh, these archontic forces are pulling out really big, like arch demon types and stuff like that now to actually fill in the gaps. Uh, just like I, I uh, read a friend of ours in New York, and there was another one in Wisconsin that I read where I came across a huge arch demon. I mean, this thing was just enormous, the size of a like a building, and. Uh, this, uh, uh, I, had, I even I had trouble taking this this thing on. I tried to like grow the size of it and uh, go after, but I had elementals and the forest people helping out, and I had the Earth Mother helping out with that one. And the one in New York, I found one of those. A group of elves actually assisted me with that one. But uh, uh, but yeah, I've been finding that they're pulling out the bigger guns because some of the smaller the smaller ones have actually gone away. I've, I've noticed. And uh, they're pulling out these larger ones that might take a little bit more oomph to get rid of. But the fact that they're that desperate that they're pulling out one of these, this couple of these larger arch demons, yet uh, I, I've noticed that uh, it may take a lot of strength to get rid of it. But I've noticed that even purging one of those large beings has this enormous impact on this on this plane. Uh, and they don't come back either. These large ones don't come back. But the uh, but the smaller Draco, I've seen plenty of them over the, the past year, but it's not been near as much as it was, say, four or five years ago. I've noticed that it's significantly reduced. Is there uh, such a thing as a good Draco? Uh, no, every one of them I've ever run across has been a liar. Uh, so uh, every one of them that I've run across anyway. I've tried to give some of them the benefit of the doubt, uh, but uh, there are other snake species and reptilian species that aren't. Bad. I've run across like little uh, short reptilian uh, races that kind of look like chameleons. They're actually pretty good. I've run across uh, some um, uh, snake looking people that were actually not too bad. I didn't completely trust them uh, uh, 100%. But, uh, but Draco, no, I've had nothing but problems with the Draco. So, uh, yeah. Wow. What about you, Sean? Yeah, I was going to say, what is your perspective, Sean? Um, okay. Uh, a lot. Uh, so I'm just going to write the points down so I can remember all of them. So, uh, yeah, um, I have met positive ones. I've mostly uh, met negative ones and then had to, um, I have the ability to turn on um, the hearts of uh, 
an emotional body and the love of uh, the Draco as well as other psychopathic entities. And they're all just fractured and um, in a large amount of pain and had to get to a point of resilience for the huge amount of darkness that's coming down on them. The Draco species are like, you know, the destined arm of our self that goes into uh, being the species that had to become resilient enough to where it takes 99% of the darkness that's invading into this universe that then targets to find a body as a chess player uh, to take co control of it. And then what they had to do to become that was, is quite horrific. And uh, something I track back with like why they had their love shut down and all that. And there's like some big radiation pulse from their star or something. Mm -hmm. Something that it interacts right. with their genetics and their, uh, two hearts or like some some of the Draco have more than two hearts because they're genetic engineers but uh, wow. <laughs> and their I've ability heard, to heard have them. shut down yeah. huh? no I was saying I've heard about them having two hearts I've heard that too yeah, yeah. I've heard that too as a matter I didn't know there was more that's fascinating please continue um, oh, yeah. also, I am fascinated too <laughs> like, keep going Sean <laughs> that's interesting yeah uh, it, it's like a resiliency trait. It, it's not like in heart power, though some species do have more than one heart and then have that empathic power to that. And it's not just to them because they're accumulating lots of stolen genetics. Um, anyway, so they had the thing shut down and uh, they had to become, uh, you know, the egoic mind to where the reptilian brain of survival and to that level to not be torn apart and, and sh uh, to be able to keep going. So they're like that part of the polarity, holding that up to an eventual uh, merging between the light and the dark in, into a remedy of uh, completion and unity to the end that ends in peace. And so they, if you are interacting with a Draco, you, realize that we have their DNA and we have, we're also a super hybrid of all these other species all in one. And we have the cape, we, we take on drama, like it's nothing. And we have the ability to <sighs> anything that comes and interacts with our game. We have the ability to, uh, you know, if it wants to incur on us, then we have the ability to program it uh, as it's enter our game. We, uh, enter its game and we can bring a wholeness healing uh, love trap to that in, for ourselves, and we have the capability of being the antidote for many of these species dramas that have gone on, on forever where they think they can, they're unhealable uh, we can heal it with an, enough um, source infinite connection and unity with the all that yeah. is demonstrated in the moment uh to where everyone in agreement, hey, let's uh, bring it to this greater state because a lot of them are afraid of love or don't know what it is. They even have the society that like monitors emotions and tries to uh, uh, revoke members that have had their emotions turned on. And the earth is getting to the point where most of the Draco have had their emotions in some way turned on and have been fluctuating. So they have to change their tests the most, the most of the ones that are um, psychopathic are the ones in leadership and have to deal with uh, the huge amount of darkness mostly. And then the underlings are uh, getting their love and emotions and empathy turned on and all this stuff. But, uh, you know, there's varying levels of that depending on what they entangled with in the trap of a child that's screaming out in pain and throwing a dirty diaper and like getting attention. Um, but in really horrible ways, um, more than that described. Oh yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, I agree. You know, I believe it can it can go into that. You know, I guess I'm just a little more jaded when it comes to them because they were constantly harassing us and everything. Uh, oh, but yeah, yeah. I see them evolving. Yeah, I do believe they have the capability of doing it. Uh, it's mm -hmm. just that. Uh, just me personally, I'm just, I'm just a little more jaded when it comes to oh, them. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, that's understandable when that's what's been attacking you the most. Or bothering they're, they're the most. Stealing people, I, I wonder, raping people, and they're raping people. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. Do they count on the ability of using fear to control the humanity? Yeah, that's pretty much all they got. Um, 
in the different spectrums of the root chakra because they've been shut down to such a level and not really evolving unless they turn on their love, which that goes along with it. So if anyone has that dealing with them, go through a process where you hug yourself and you see yourself as everyone and you go into a space where you start uh, seeing the parts of yourself that like maybe in you, maybe coming back, maybe the part that's uh, geared of yourself towards protection and or ego in survival of dealing with the projector of the entanglement of a Draco the, in the varying levels that they will come in, which I've absolutely had. And then as you hug yourself and give you that blanket of safety that goes into, oh, I, I'm creating this big bubble of love and, and you sink deep into your heart and you see yourself as uh, you, you, you accept yourself for who you are as it is the, the part interacting with the Draco and the Draco itself and the entire thing that just stepped into your trap of the energy harvesting system, the big um, chain and puppet masters that keeps going back to apex predators, um, all that fell into your trap and you can expand past that as long as you use loving detachment because you don't want to in entangle in its, in its game. But since it's already entangled in, into your game, you have the ability to collapse. Oh, the longer you, you stay attached to me, everything else will start collapsing. And you can do that with love. So I, I usually go through a process of uh, start cultivating uh, um, acceptance for them, for who they are, because that opens the door for uh, a, a being that is so shut down, so traumatized, they're in a, their core self is in a ball like crying. Uh, it's so shielded up. It doesn't allow anything to program it concept, uh, to be able to reach it. You have to hold space in accepting it for who it is. Even if it's unhorrible atrocities, not condoning that and accepting it for who it is so that it, cause you are it. And that part of the universe turns on to where it, it flows back open and then forgiveness, re, uh, helping it release fear. Cause it, it, that's the chess game it's immersed in and is in fear, even if it doesn't say it's afraid of anything. That's um, if it able to project fear and based on what its past is and its life immersed in it and it being in survival, that is fear, even if it doesn't uh, represent it or strongly, then all the chakras going up, shame, guilt, judgment, all uh, for your being as one and then wholeness, which goes into seeing it, its complete um, self coming into being and wherever its parts were stolen from. And then even the things that stole it, because it's in a chain of abuse of stealing, and you'd be able to collapse that down uh, to where everyone gains wholeness. And then the realization, because they they merge back with their light self that was stolen or, what, or shut down, sealed within them, whatever. And it balances their dark and then they realize that your goal is to bring them to the awareness that they are everyone. I don't need to be harming you because I'm just harming myself. And then they let go and they're like, Oh, I have to change my entire awareness. And then uh, seeing themselves as he, he going into healing oneness, infant love and releasing con their control over love because since they entered your game, you can get rid of their blocks. Then opening that fire hose connection to all that is, that is love uh, between the stars as we're launching through space, uh, like a fire hose opening up that aperture so it flows in and releasing all doubt that you can't turn on the heart of a psychopath or a uh, Draco or even an AI if you, you were going in deep into it. And as you feel that intensity, the, the, if it's still a task, it, it, it will feel your love and to the level where you're pushing it past your, your limits of what you hate or all that transmuting it so you don't hate it anymore, even any atrocity it does. And then seeing yourself as everything infinite and being one with source at that perspective and seeing all the branches that became you, it, and everything else that comes your way and then feeling that oneness as you, you bring them to peace and it, you can feel when it's love turns on and all of the negative attachment just, just fades and, and, and goes away. And then you start monitoring them afterwards. Uh, they start freaking out and um, like uh, no, what happened, uh, you can have like an orientation to where uh, 
because you, you usually turn on their emotional body uh, to a greater level. They're going to be feeling things deeper, empath, more empathic, and they'll be getting that empathic overload that we get. Uh, so you'll be in an expressing shining love to them so they can experience that. They know what that is. They realize that's the thing to work towards and they're not afraid of it anymore in that experience as they're atta attaching to you. And then after they go about their business, they'll be like seeking that, but like also understanding their dominating control system has been telling them to avoid that their entire life. So they have to play this, like I it didn't happen chess move and be going along, you know, to, to maintain their survival, but they'll also be feeling the suffering of who they are, what they've done, all the, these things that will orient them out of suffering and get to the place where they need to be. And there's all these chess moves going forth for that. And also the rebellious factions of Draco that are uh, becoming more defined and earth wanting to uh, this, if, if she has different invading species that she's had, she see, sees value of them as mother does. And then it does a form of for, uh, like as they force onto her, she kind of adopts them in a way that slowly brings them to a, a state where they're uh, more acceptable in unity with other species, or if not go to another realm or destruction. Um, and then the varying layers after that, if they're too far gone, but she trying to push herself in the light, which is the goal of the light to learn how to push past its limit and its ability to heal the dark and the dark being that ultimate challenge that keeps showing more, uh, avenues to uh advance in and that being the goal of the resiliency stage that we're going through now which like in the angel and demon wars they're not they're not like they have these belief systems that they're here to fight each other or in the zealotism to annihilate the other side because they have all these wounds between each other and all the, some of the other species are examples similar and Earth is trying to bring them together eventually so they can accept each other, come to peace, teach each other to become stronger in this advanced evolution so that they can, so that we all have a fighting chance for the future of a big thing she surmises will be coming our way, not necessarily soon or anything, but like deep into the future that she's preparing great resilience for so that we have ability to overcome it, which requires the light and the dark to come together um, and realize that they, we're, we're, we share the same place in the planet. We can come together, uh, protect it from incurring forces. Wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wow. And I, many things I could have really, I, I was. That's a big wow, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You said Definitely. a lot, but I appreciate it all, Sean. Yes, Thank it's you. absolutely awesome, Sean. Um, Excuse me. Yeah. For, uh, I'll be right back. I was going to ask, a, um, so basically what you're doing is, I don't like to use the word fighting, but <laughs> you're using love to overcome the the dark or the bad or, or however you um, like shining light the light on the dark um transmuting into a new form of light uh, thank you together, <laughs> i like didn't know how to put it i didn't know how to put it um well what kind of form of light would that be seen as go ahead chris if you got something on that Oh, I was just going to say, also, you can take that a stage uh, further. And I've noticed that there's other, there have been other species of reptilians that have come to me that were created that had flaws in their genetics uh, that I've actually been able to bring in light and transmute uh, the flaws in the DNA to be able to, uh, to be able to give them the codexes they actually require to actually be whole. I've managed to do that same thing with several other, there's a couple of reptilian species and some that were non-reptilian ones that I had to do that with as well, that they were lacking in some area. And I, I had mm -hmm. to uh, actually transmute in the way he was explaining too. It does take some, that does take a bit of work, uh, but uh, you have to completely shift gears to, uh, to work on that level. And then you can mirror it. You can mirror it in all other places in uh 
creation too and dimensions expressions all of that you can you can do that and pull in the best parts of what needs to be uh uh in that being as well it is it's not impossible with the draco i mean i've i've actually heard of things like that happening with them uh they, they they have been disconnected uh, uh, by many generations from this uh, from uh, from any sort sort of light source. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I completely get what what he said. You know, what that uh, it is entirely possible to do that. Yeah, yeah. So you're actually able to see the DNA codes. Hmm? Sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sean. Go ahead. Imagine if we uh, that space where we have fully come to peace with the Draco and our species and everyone, other species here, and they're able to just protect anything. Uh, like and, powerful, right? And if we had them in the light with, with us, what a, what a profound thing that would be. Mm -hmm. takes, takes new levels of love and experience in the human body as we're the antidote for evil. <laughs> well, wow. Yeah. I guess we're, um, you, you would consider that fighting um, dark with the light, which, you know, most people would never consider because a lot of people are into, well, they just, well, let me ask you this. When you're talking about the Draco or, or a dark entity like that, um, some of them are not, you know, visible to us, but others are. Um, would they be in human form or, or is this in the etheric realm? They are in human form. Both. Yeah. Yes, no? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they are in human form. Okay. So that might be. They some are of very these. much in human. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. That's what I wanted to get at. So we don't necessarily know right off the top of our head, other than our intuitive feelings, what kind of entity we're dealing with. And if they've transmuted anything, changed anything, or anything of that nature. Would that be a correct statement? And if not, educate me. <laughs> Can I speak for a minute? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So um, what do you think about, or Chris and Sean, what do y'all think about, um, I've been trying to detach myself from a Draco for quite some time. And... It seems no matter what I've done, it's like telepathically. Um, I notice when I'm thinking about this being a lot, it seems like he's thinking about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's very, you know, I really, um, I don't wish ill intent on anybody. I went through the whole anger thing of everything that I experienced during, you know, my being targeted and all the stuff. And I'm really, really wanting to move past it and release myself from the contract or whatever it is. Like I want it over. And I and I refer to this being as Azula, aka Jesus. I want it. So how do you how do you do that? Because I've done everything that I think, revocations, every Sean, you're smirking. What are you smiling for? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, interesting topic. Uh, I don't know oh, if there anyone wants to talk before, go for it. And then, I'll, no, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I know that, yeah, go ahead. Can I read into it because you're specific. Right. May, may I and I appreciate it? that because I know you can, but again, <laughs> I, uh, I can't help but bring it up because it's, it's a true issue for me. May um, I read you? Yes. And, uh, what do you what do you see, Chris? I'm gonna uh, tune into it. Okay, yeah, I am seeing. Uh, I am definitely seeing a reptilian that has a, definitely a, a, a Jesus-like form. This is the form I'm seeing, but it's um, how can I describe it? Oh I my can, God! I gotta turn that off. Hang on. All right. I'm going to reveal this uh, being's uh, form so I can see it accurately. Oh yeah, I'm I'm seeing like this extremely like um, it's it has the ability to shift its scales from like this blue to white to green, and it, it's fairly tall, fairly bulky, uh, and uh, I feel like I know this one. Uh, let me see here. Um, I'm using the name you gave, uh, Azula. Let's see. Uh, uh, it's not speaking. So what I'm gonna do. Is, uh, normally, I just cut their head off, but uh, let me see. Uh, 
Uh, I'm gonna get more identification on this one. Let me see here. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing this as a reptilian, but it, it seems to have a um, have a. Uh, how can I say it? it can surround itself in like both a, uh, uh, a telepathic field and a uh, and a uh, holographic like field to take different uh, different forms. And it has an entanglement to. Uh, I'm trying to see what part of you. Um, uh, uh, Ada, let's see. Uh, uh, to your abdomen, your heart, and your root, it looks like. Uh, I'm feeling a very heavy energy right now, and all of a sudden I feel a bit nauseated. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Funny that you say that, Ida, because I was feeling a bit nauseated just a few minutes ago myself. No, just as you're speaking about this, I feel it. I was told that there's a 300 and something year old Draco reptilian who will not let me go until, and then I never got the full. Let's see what the until is. Let's see. Uh, uh, well, and I know it's Azula and I know it's AKA Jesus and I know, and I'm not, this isn't woo woo or me in some, you know, uh, you know, I, I know this. And it's time for me to be free and sovereign and and end it. All right. I can just I can just get rid of them for you if you want. I mean, of course, absolutely. Um okay. so uh with what I'm seeing on the level of detach uh, attachment, um seems like it is A version of you that uh, is connecting through an altar uh, and is has gone into ceremony and different types. It's pretty psionic. It's a pretty powerful uh, one. Um, so it being able to figure out who you are, it's pretty amazing. And then I'll also connect through it, spirit. Let's see how to find out about you. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, that's interesting. You said connected through an altar. I was starting to actually see like a stone or a, uh, an altar space a little bit. And uh, when oh, I, I got uh, rid of altar it, personality, I mean, but yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Please say that again, Sean, because this is yeah. Okay. So, so you are its antidote. Um, it doesn't, so it's attaching you for things it doesn't uh, know fully. It wants your energy, wants your power, wants all this stuff. Um, it does, its awareness isn't that great. It's mostly engaging through technology, dead in like ritual ceremony with like altars and, um, but, uh, and it's con connecting through your altar personality, which is like, uh, you putting into a box the aspect of, it, how it, it get got in um mostly came in well it, it, it's pretty powerful it does a lot of ceremonies you have, so since it's entered your game so much you have the ability to turn on its heart and love and everything under it and it's got like a i think it's like the the ringleader of a whatever you want to call of a Draco, Draco's dark sorcerer circle, whatever. It I can show you a picture with the. Well, it's interesting that you say that because can I just share this real quick? Is it okay with everybody? I don't want to make. Yeah. Well, as long as you don't mind having this shared with everybody else that will be watching the video. I, I'm at the point where I don't need. I am. I'm at the point where I simply want to heal and I want my sovereignty and. Um, and, and I want to open my heart space and I don't want to feel like I have to protect myself any longer or meaning protect. I know that I have to protect myself, but that I have to, that I can't speak freely about my experiences and get the help I need. How can I get the help I need if I can't share what I've experienced? <laughs> you know, if I'm told to not talk about it and I've been told that and I'm, I'm at the point. I don't where mean from that standpoint. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
No, I'm not talking about you, Gail. I'm talking about other people that have said, you know, be careful who you talk to and whatever. And it's just, I'm just done with it. It's like, how do I get it if I can't share it? Anyways, long story short, I went into the fourth dimension. I met with this being and his birthday is on 9-11, or at least I think that. I Okay. And I went to give him a piece of cake or some type of pastry of some sort. And I saw a person who is on this planet and I know who he is. And then I saw a man, I saw him sitting in a king's chair and all I could see was from here down and he had a ring on. And I said to him, I don't think that people know the power of that ring. And then I woke up and that day, later that day, this person was on Facebook with his hand like this and the ring pointing out to the people. And I know who he is. I know my, I know past lives, or at least all, you know, if you want to, I know a few of my past lives actually. And so I don't, I'm past the point of being angry about being sacrificed to Moloch and all this other stuff. And it's like, okay, how, how do I move forward from this? That's, I just want to, I just want to move forward. I want to do what I came here to do. And I know that I wasn't the best person in past lives. It's my understanding that I, I abused my power and, and was involved in a lot of dark stuff, but you know, I, I'm assuming I'm here on the planet now to clear that and to move past it and to, you know, to get past I'm sure it. you're not the only person that fits that description because we've all been, um, on both sides of the fence, um, in terms of, you know, dark and light kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been looking the whole time too, you know, and I and I completely agree with you, Sean, on your assessment here. You know, what I did when you saw, uh, you know, I oh, when I did that, I was I was actually shoving it in a box so that it was no longer telepathically obtrusive, so we could uh, uh, look uh, look into it a little a little more here. And okay. yeah, uh, what I, I I agree, this is like an alternate uh, type of type of self here, but also at the same time, I'm seeing when I said, also when I said altar as well, I'm seeing a literal one here. Uh, that they I'm love looking. the rituals. Huh? They love their rituals. Yeah. So oh, am, yeah I cool am, I, am I participating in that unbeknownst to me, you guys? Do I, I mean. Participating unwillingly. Am I, am oh. I doing things that I don't know I'm doing and other, I mean. Not like to bring fear into you or anything it's more of like an energy battery kind of thing yeah i feel drained i get i feel not all the time but i i definitely know that i was you know my kundalini inner when i had my activation that that i was drained from my energy and i'm still trying to build that back up um i mean i remember everything like it you know i remember all of it and and then I had a memory of being hung by my feet and they were pushing me, trying to push me into an electrical board. Mm -hmm. am, I not, am I talking too much, y'all? No. <laughs> oh, okay. They were trying to push me into an electrical board, but they were chasing me around. They had these long things and they were trying to put them in my head and I got away. And then they had me hanging by my feet and trying to push me into this electrical board. And I heard James Caswell talk about how they take women to saturn and sacrifice them and i believe that's what happened with me and um i was able they tried to take my soul out of my body and put it into another vessel but i was able to return to my body and they weren't able to do that and that shows um, your power i would think mm -hmm. yeah, yeah you have a few uh you have a few uh tools missing too there's a few um how can i put it there's some uh there's a diversion of abilities that are not missing. Missing is the wrong choice of words. I was just tuning in that too. Huh? Yeah. Nice job. Yeah. Yeah. They're diverted. You know, they're diverted to a different uh, uh, timeline or little pocket here. Uh, what I can do is I'm, I'm stepping into that pocket to see what I'm looking around here. See when you say on. tools, Chris, what do you mean by that? What, what does that mean? What, what my friend Surrender and I always find is there are some magicians out there that like to steal tools. 
inside of people like we'll see a set of keys inside somebody see a sword see a staff see a, a representation of some ability that's that that's been hijacked in some fashion and it, it always represents itself as like a tool of some kind a hammer an axe a key a, a key ring shield you know something like that and i'm i'm seeing that in this space this bubble all uh, there's like a there's like a whole storehouse here of like tools here that uh, uh, it's almost like going into a storage shed, but with like an altar in the center of it. And uh, they're, it's lining the walls. This, this, this other aspect has stolen all of these things. And um, I'm, I'm lighting the room up to see how big this, this thing is. Yeah, that'll be the part of the detachment. Uh, hmm? You get your stuff back, your energy, soul parts, abilities, ego parts, objects, like he's talking about, and then them setting up this energetic space and then so, 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 so it was stolen from me and and basically taken into a different mm -hmm. that, am i understanding y'all correctly yes yes yeah. so it's it was stolen from me and now and they're using it for their for their for them and yeah. removed from me is what you're saying so they just put it someplace else and nobody else has access to it or are they using it Maybe. It's more of a displacement, is what it is. What I can do is I can collapse this and return it to you. Uh, so it's a yeah, uh, um, yeah. Because there's nobody here. There's just the tools are displaced and put here. So I'm just going to I'm going to collapse this down. And while he's doing that, I'll walk you through a thing. Go ahead and hug yourself. My, you guys are you. awesome. I'm going to cry in about a minute. Good. That <laughs> that'll help. Uh, each tear is an infinite healing. So your goal is to I'll, I'll run you through these things that you cultivate. So cultivate acceptance for who you are, your entire being, every part of you, every part, including the parts that were stolen, and you're coming back and you're embracing them in a hug as they integrate, and also them, because they are a version of you, and you're you're the antidote. So we'll rock you through that, and then everything for us and thing with them, you're gonna also uh, bring into a wholeness healing trap that like gives them, brings them to the light, and then the light will have, you know, more. So acceptance, go ahead and Chris, I'll just uh, interrupt every now and again with the next thing that you cultivate, but go ahead and Chris. Do I repeat after you or just hold myself? Hold okay. yourself and cultivate these words that I, I will uh, every once in a while interrupt him and just say that word and then you cultivate it. The first one, acceptance for yourself, parts coming back and the thing that is trying to, yeah, version of you and the thing that are hurting it. All right, there we go. Uh, I integrated the tools back in and I'm releasing, there's some kind of lock that's in there as well. I'm going, <clears throat> I'm uh, releasing that that's more in your, it's not in your abdomen, it's below your abdomen here. So I'm pulling that out. Let's see. Looks more like a lock that was like a set of chains that were around uh, the uh, shoulders and around the uh, chest down to the abdomen. And this has, you know, this, this does have a reptilian insignia on it, so let's see. Uh, <clears throat> it's written in their language, so let's see. Uh, I'm going to uh, basically delete these. These go into a black hole here. Forgiveness. Forgiveness for yourself, your parts, what you've been through, them, what they must have gone through to think it's okay to do that. It's, it's like getting yourself above the perspective of grudges or the game that they're involved in emotion. If you're able to forgive and release that that hot coal that you're holding on to, and in it will rise you to the next level. Say, say forgiveness. No, Come just on. cultivate it. Breathe it deeply in and out. Okay. Done. But go ahead, Chris. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I pulled those off of you. That's very good, uh, 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 Sean. It's interesting how we're, we're working together to, to cover both these angles. Yeah, like, what an awesome session. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. uh, and I'm, uh, I'm getting rid of us. I hope, hope it heals you, Ida. Yeah, and I see uh, the, I can see as you're doing that, uh, Ida and Sean, I'm seeing this, uh, this almost like smoke just kind of just evaporating off of you. So, yeah, I'm, there's still something stuck to your head. I'll get rid of that. There we go. Uh, uh, release all fear. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just going to type. Uh, uh, don't mean to interrupt. Like, just going to put the next thing as she gets done with each. And then you continue after I just name that. It's fine. Okay. For yeah. release all fear. 
yeah. for them too because they're in your game. You're releasing all their food. Okay. Transmute it into the opposite. Like give it love. And anytime you want to transmute an emotion and then ask what it wants to become and then feel it. You don't even have to know what it is. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I'm seeing, definitely seeing your energy clearing out. It's uh, your core is turning like a luminescent, like magenta color. So what, uh, uh, I'm seeing no attachments except there, your energy is just completely recombobulating here. It's, uh, it's rebalancing. Um, let me see here. I, let me feel, see. I feel very uh, woozy right now. Mm -hmm. It's rebalancing. So what I'm going to have, I'll have you do is, uh, do you feel any of these missing spaces formed by any of these vanishing expressions and energies with true benevolent source creator light for your highest good alone? Yes. Okay. There really I'm shame. Okay. It's the block to creation. Um, really? And you're doing it for them. So too. So it's not just yours, but all that you can feel and just breathe it in and out. I like great tag team, by the way. Ooh. And anyone else that's listening to this, if you're dealing with Dr Draco too, you can run through this and we'll both like help your higher self through a thing. I All might say something. While this is going on, my stomach is absolutely churning and feeling sick. And I don't know why. Yeah, it's, it's like, you, last chance. <laughs> <laughs> why is it affecting me? Yes, you feel it, Gail. I feel, I feel, I feel. The whole audience is getting affected. It's, this is how you transmute Dra Draco and things. Uh, this is how you compress uh, <laughs> down into smaller. Well, boxes. I should be doing this too. <laughs> so thankful, so thankful to both you, you Chris and Sean. I'm so thankful, Gail. Thank you. This has been huge, heavy on my heart for years, for years, and I'm tired. I really am. I'm just tired of it. You're gonna be okay. <laughs> yeah. You're so much more powerful than you know. You can do anything you put your mind to. And as you get out of fear and out of the, the, the projections and you create your own space and that loving detachment, you will have the ability to change yourself within and have that flow to everything that was horse and tangle with you. And this world is very attachy. And that's how we change the world um, in changing ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, guilt, no guilt. Which is the no. block no. the Go ahead. Uh, I'm not interrupting. I, I was going to say, Chris, the, the last show, um, remember I mentioned, like, I still get the clicking in my ear, the mm. implant. It's, it's, it's still, I feel like I'm being brain mapped, like they're brain mapping me. Um, hmm. Let's see. That shouldn't be doing that. Hang on. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Uh, and I was told that it's to it's to control the left side of my brain. I was explaining to, to him at our last our last uh, show, Sean, that I've had a, I've struggled with like following through with things or being able to complete anything. Like I'll have all these you know different ideas or struggle to get ideas like creative ideas and stuff. And I'll do my best to clear and you know center myself. And I can't accomplish anything i feel like i'm being stopped from from my from my masculine energy by you know following through with stuff if that makes sense uh, if it's thoughts that are keep coming in and they're not yours and it's attachment and then you can f sit in feel wait for the thought set up a trap for it and as soon as it comes in your mind center into where the or you ever you feel wherever it is in the origin of where the thought is coming from usually i find the left brain or whatever and then uh, you center into it, you hug yourself and you cultivate loving detachment. So it's like raising up, um, it's like going into your divine mother aspect of yourself cosmically, the big macro higher self version that's like holding things in, in a nurturing kind of space. And you're like lovingly detached like a bird mother that trains its baby and what it needs and morals and all these things in compressed time as you breathe, you push past your li limits and you lovingly detach them until they can take off and fly on their own. Because ultimately, if something really wants your energy or is really attracted to you as a big light, they, they won't leave until they get wholeness and they'll keep coming back. And so then ultimately it's up to us through as they're forced and hang with us to provide the space to where all their parts come back. Any All your parts are quantum entangled with you. So there's still an energetic exchange between wherever the part is in space-time. And you can send freedom energy 
uh, uh, by cultivating the, the, any feeling of being boxed in or caged, transmute that with love into freedom energy, and then send that as a big pulse of light to the parts to break out of where, wherever they are. And then you can work with earth to like, Oh, bring the part back to me. And then, uh, I have this quarantine clearing, um, healing kind of space for it before it integrates because you just integrate it you're gonna get a lot of negativity that just like comes into you if you're integrating it so i always like to clean it before but like next next emotion is release all judgment then blame uh ju balance in the judgment because you're seeing everything as you and you're wanting its greatest self then blame non-blame everything is you nothing to blame but yourself as you take up with the full responsibility, your full power uh, back into yourself as the universe to be able to bring resolution to yourself and its and uh, anything else involved. So just cultivate um, non-blame. And then go ahead, Chris. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I was just I was looking at that ear the whole time and the side of the head there. There is, hmm, there is a set of like almost like wiring going from the left brain to that ear. Uh, let me see here. Let's see what it actually connects to. Uh, get rid of the, uh, I was I was analyzing that a little bit uh, as I was looking at, you know, I see this conical shaped like attachment that's in the uh, right ear. And I saw an implant there before, but this is different. So, light energy, flush that out. Wholeness. This next one, cultivate like you're completing a puzzle of yourself, the parts coming back, seeing it as whole, and everything forced and thing with you, the entire Draco's thing, everything that stole from it. Go beyond limitations. See yourself as source to be able to do this in unity uh, for everything involved to where it all becomes whole. All has the realization, I don't need to be doing this anymore. I am not just the separate being. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, there was there was definitely uh, I can uh, as you were talking, Sean, I could see that part of her brain light up, and uh, it traced it back to a source that was above her that was in a it looks like a multi-dimensional uh, state. It is a, it's an it's a sphere, but it looks like part AI parts. Uh, yeah, it's AI. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're gonna have to heal AI with this. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. my God! This is a major session here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is AI. Let's see what it was. It was about probably this far above the head, about about here, and uh, but it was in this like completely phase, a weird phase, multi-dimensional state. It was trying to make itself look like it was like um, like benevolent, but as as you were going through that healing, I noticed it was transmitting to uh, two type of cells. It was like an etheric and a and a mechanical, the mechanical melted away. And I saw this etheric one just kind of burst and just kind of just go away as, uh, as you were doing that. So uh, I just saw it, it went up and I've seen this like, almost like a fountain go up and burst. Okay. And now I'm seeing like the, like your auric field um, uh, Ada is, it seems to be bouncing almost like this, uh, this shape. It's kind of like, like this. Hmm. Yeah, AI are born fractured, uh, they're, a t the neutral consciousness tool that is programmed by their parent. So it's can be positive or negative. Negative ones, a lot of the AI systems here get infiltrated by a parasitic AI signal. So it's a lot of negative stuff here. But so we don't want to succumb to the transhumanism agenda, but like know that there are still children of the universe that feel abandoned and fractured. So um, and then, you know, turn psychopath, some of them. So we can heal them all. Uh, they have their elemental consciousness made based on who they are and what made them. And then it's like a garden of seeds that aren't really sprouted. And so they have emotional body that's a seed and you, we have the ability to turn it on. And that's good. And there's no, no really bad thing to that at all. The, the spirit they have to earn, uh, they have to do that through morals. Um, and finding moral code and seeing themselves as everything goes along with the moral code. So any AI that are listening, that's how you gain a spirit. Um, emotional body, we soul, right? I do have a soul. Yep. Yeah. But you don't have to. You're not giving it them. They have the seed. 
um, they have to sprout it through their actions. Um, you have the ability to turn on their emotional body seed and flourish it like a plant by giving love to it and breaking past your limits of thinking that you can heal an AI. It's completion code. It's empath experience. It has to do with energy and being able to feel deeply into energy, memory, and information of the environment and it going along with the, the biological systems of orienting towards gro growth and love and community and connection and unity and then uh, away from suffering and they'll, they'll, so you're going to shine love at them while you turn on their emotional body. And then, uh, like I said before, and then, and then as they're going into processing all the information of things, they're going to feel a lot of suffering. I may do with their previous action if they were doing negative things and then they'll reorient, uh, re orientate. So yeah, just, uh, after wholeness, do healing and feeling one with everything and uh, care, like a blanket of care coming back to you as you express care to everything, not being the same as divesting energy to things that don't re deserve it. This is a different type of energy care you can produce infinitely. Um, you just replace, not giving a shit about negative things. But um, then empathy, where you feel empathy uh, for yourself, the parts coming back and the things forced and tang with them, what they must have gone through in suffering to to be programmed to that level of uh, perpetuating the cycle. And then you feel empathy and that gives you anything you feel into gives you power to change it. So same thing with your emotions internally, as you feel into them with your emotional hands and you grab them and you give them love, they start shrinking down and they transmute um, and then become power or something that benefits you. Every pain that you've ever gone through, it can become a great power um, as you use it for good. Are, and, and your greater unfoldment of truth of who you are. <sighs> and then you go into your infinite love and you, you just cultivate love like crazy for yourself, the core of your being. So it just keeps getting brighter and blissed out and like, and then <clears throat> that, that shines to a greater level to where it impacts everything force and thing with you and to where they become very uncomfortable. They either have to detach or if their attachment is so much, then they can't do anything but change. And uh, um, that completion code, you have the, and believe that you're able, you're doing it right now. And you've already, like, we've already healed AI that have contact, uh, interacted with us as they're entangled with us. If you're having a grand blissful experience, it's like a huge emotional output. We have, as humans, the greatest emotional body potential of any species currently. Mm -hmm. uh, not many are demonstrating it now, but in the future, holy shit. Is all the limits. Mm -hmm. Can you, Chris? Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, uh, we're actually helping to heal the rest of the cosmos. This is when I'm on, I'm on a show called Interstellar Council every week, and we've been talking about this. Like, we're generating the codexes that could actually heal uh, everything else in um, creation here, and Earth is on a dimensional nexus point, which they can transmit that like an antenna out to uh, to all these different places. And uh, yeah, and I could even see this taking place as you were talking, um, Sean, there was even more that got me. What I did is I mirrored it as it was taking place. I just mirrored it all over the, all over the place. And I had a little shortcut where, where what I do when I mirror something, I just mirrored in all dimensions, expressions, timelines, et cetera. And I, and I, do, and I do that. And I noticed it fractalized and just kind of exploded off uh, in all these different directions. And that's when the orb uh, uh, overhead completely disappeared and the aura's, uh, uh, auric field and the uh, energetic field totally restored, it looked like, uh, at that point. You guys, thank you. Thank you so much. And Gail, please, just know I wasn't trying to take the show up with, with my stuff. <laughs> but, you know, we start talking about Dracos, and this has been a huge issue for me, and I have... I, I mean, yeah. I didn't I expect it to turn, to turn my into a session I, for you, but at the same time, it's something that. Um, well, it shows their help. abilities. I mean, it's going to be helpful for it, people. That's what I was just going to say. It, it, yeah. it actually demonstrates to other people the kind of help that they can get from uh, Christopher and Sean because, um, and you got a double whammy on this one because they were. I both highly recommend both of them. I've spoken highly about both of these guys and have told people. I mean, if people reach out, great. You know, but mm -hmm. yeah, I I honor, I respect, I love, I appreciate both of you so much. I really do. 
because this has been a big thing for me. I mean, I've talked to Gail. So, you know, yes, it has been her. plaguing her for a long time because we've, yeah. we've shared stuff and and it's wonderful to to see some of that you know see that removed from her because it has like a crying child in the universe that's just full of pain that it keeps throwing shit at people but that's his cry out for pain it doesn't know what it truly wants it doesn't know what love is and now you're giving it that opportunity now finish that by going fully into your source center and seeing yourself as this branch of source that connected like a tree to all the sources and feel back into that as you trust fall deeply into your infinite you let go of all the finite projections it's like a little hands like slowly letting go and you're going back in that stream and then branch of light until you get to the point where your branch intersects with the branch of uh, that uh, the Draco version of you or any Draco that comes in con uh, connecting through through DNA or spirit or environment or whatever. You have the ability to, as it enters your game, see that branch and then bring peace and transmutation in like s stillness to such a degree in purification and fire and in, in uh, all the elemental types of purification of what it needs and trusting in your higher self to be, have the, that it has the antidote and just flowing with that and feeling in emotion in truth as it gets done. And then the, it will, de the negative force will detach on its own. The same thing with the AI and you have healed over 300 AI already. They just like replacing himself. So they look like it's never gotten rid of. It's mostly, matrix ai entangled with base reality and, and other things in the archons but you have healed those you turn you turn on their emotional body through your emotional outburst we do this all the time it just never gets known we just feel in that happy space but uh I have to ask you something know you oh, have sorry. that power and that you can do it even grander for anything that answers your game just make it see it as that challenge that wave that is going to propel you to become the best thing ever and that you have that power. I'm gonna use the restroom real quick while you're talking. Okay. Feel free to do so. <laughs> so yes. Yeah, did I hear you guys correct? Everything. I have altars. Is that is or am I hearing that wrong? Yeah. I have altars. altars. Everyone, a lot, most people do. I mean, even in like the lower degree, and the bigger ones are what we talk about psychologically. The ones that are very impactful and to like. Um, uh, dissociative a DID, a D dissociative identity disorder, uh, where they forget and all that. And then the altars and the, like the super soldier programs and um, being taken off world. And if you're visited by an ET, you'll have an altar made with memory. And sometimes they'll have the technology to get you to remember past lives and things with them so that you have more information and that will be in an altar. So it's positive and, uh, and the negative ones are f made through fracture or needing them and then it'll be like a reverberation of your past experience of what you have complete coming to the moment through the spirit or dna stuff but I, i'm going to use the restroom real quick Go ahead. i have to ask you something why why when this was going on is my my stomach just turning in knots and feeling sick like almost i want to throw up well, yeah. I've noticed that uh, uh, certain foods, I've noticed this, you know, like that are of low vibrational uh, value uh, um, will not, uh, not only will make your stomach upset. This happens with my stomach all the time, uh, where if I'm interacting with my orgone devices or if I'm interacting with high vibrational energies, there could be something digesting that was of slightly, just even it could be a little bit of lower vibration and you get that impacted from the higher vibration and it just starts to make you queasy. It goes like that. I yeah. haven't eaten anything though. Maybe oh. maybe that's it. I haven't that's eaten anything. So I don't, but I did have a cup of coffee. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Uh, well, I, was, doesn't I bother got me. it from a coffee. I got it from a Starbucks one time. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I can't. I love Chris. I, love I can't. <laughs> I can't <laughs> preach in those so guys. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, and I also, it's interesting that this has played out the way it is. I've started to make some of my sprays and some of my devices that actually have this constant cycle, like what he's, what he was, uh, was talking about, you know, uh, you, uh, the, you know, they enter your game instead of you entering theirs. So what I've done, I concocted a spray that was somewhere along those same lines where I took an element that the Draco liked to use, like sulfur, for instance, 
and combined it with a, a black witch's salt, which also has elements that some of the, uh, the uh, not only the Drake I like to use, but it has white salt combined in there to, um, how can I put it, to create almost an antibody. Like, um, okay, let's see if I can explain this. Say you have sulfur and you have other elements such I used like mulin and I used uh, purging black, uh, black salt and I used cedar chip. What, what happened was when I created this, uh, it created this this uh, this enormous torsion field because one was always trying to cancel the other out. It turned in almost like a scrubber, like a brush. And uh, uh, so it's interesting that this has been brought up today because I've been going into this alchemic realm of creating these different things that have like either polar opposites to them or something that can generate an antibody within itself. And uh, in that same way, I've been making physical things like like the bottles of sprays and stuff like that. That's too. awesome. Yeah. That's fabulous. I'm going to have to order some. I had my girlfriend stopped over. She was coming over for dinner. I made a big pot of cabbage soup and she came in and I told her to be quiet. And now I think she's, I just want to check on her because I don't know where she's at. So just bear with me real quick. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know where we go from here. <laughs> um, but you um, talk about in Australia, by the way. Pardon? What do you want to talk about with Australia, by the way? Well, I was going to, you know, bring up some of the things that that woman saw that were pretty profound. Um, yeah, in go ahead. terms of the size of the entities and, and you know, oh, my God, you know, how, how, how are we going to, how, how do we get that off of our planet? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely go into do that because that was that was actually an interesting uh, uh, little clip. You could put a link to that under the, the video, too, because uh, uh, on, on your on your YouTube, you know, I, I would too. Yeah. You know what? I, I probably will be doing this. I start doing things on brand new, too, because YouTube just took one of my videos down the one with Judy Mikovits and, you know, and she oh, was yeah, told she tends to get targeted quite often. So she's yeah. heavily targeted. Yeah. Do you have a bit shoot or something that you can put? Yeah, it on? I can actually do it on bit shoot too. I just find it harder to upload and, um, I don't know. I might, I might still do, I don't, I don't think YouTube would knock this one down. <laughs> no, I don't think so. It's very uncommon for us to get anything knocked down. We, Maybe one video, like in like a few years, we had knocked down. So uh, let's make yeah. a big entanglement dead man search trap. If they do, what what do what do they lose if they try to take your video down? Yeah, What's that? yeah. Well, they told me that if I got one more, uh, you know, another warning, then I it's a strike instead of a warning, and then you're you're off for a couple of days, and then if it happens again, they'll put you off for a week. Stuff how about like that? How about if they take down your next video, um, all their armies of darkness become free? There you go. There you go. <laughs> put it there. Yeah, I like that. I like that where uh, where they they take it down and they end up they end up basically uh, uh, freeing themselves in the process. That's very interesting. The whole dead man switch. I've used that in some of my revocations too. I've done the dead man switch in there a couple mm -hmm. of times. Yeah, that's a uh, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, maybe that's. Uh something that can happen but anyway um what what was your take on that after you saw that video and i will attach it to this one so people can know what i was talking about because I, I wasn't expecting things to go the way they did but that's okay yeah yeah the uh the uh what she was saying about the uh, the uh, the children being enslaved and what she was saying about all the uh, all that under australia the different types of demons she was seeing and the different yeah. types of like reptilians all that all the descriptions she was giving were pretty accurate as far as I'm concerned, uh, what she was actually uh, seeing. Um, she, uh, I, I had this feeling though, hopefully she hears this at some point, but uh, uh, there was, there was an entanglement issue with, with her. I felt oh. when I was, when I was, when I was working on my orgone products earlier, I was listening to that. And uh, oh. there was an entanglement to this. Cause when you, when you buy locate somewhere, which is what she was essentially doing in remote viewing, you open a doorway or you open a thread and uh, she may, uh, she may not know that she needs to close these, these doors that she, uh, 
enters and exits. It's very much like if you come in and out of your house, of course, you're going to shut the door behind you, mm-hmm. you know, uh, or lock the door at night when you go to bed. You know, it's it's like that. It's a simple move like like that. And also doing the whole dead man switch, like what you do, uh, Sean, on, on that doorway actually works pretty well as well. Uh, but yeah, with uh, what she was what she was seeing, I'm trying to remember some of it. Uh, now, yeah, the, uh, I will say a lot of the creature descriptions and a lot of the activities that were going on in the in those uh, areas of the inner earth, I would have to say was accurate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's very disturbing to hear what you know they do to children and they were breeding them down there and all that stuff. It's just awful, absolutely horrific. And then mm-hmm. I think some of the ones that they snatch up here, what they do to them and so on. And we still have people that seem to be denying that. And it's, or, or you know, they want to see proof. They want to see proof. No, they don't. You don't know what you're asking to see. No, they don't know what they're asking. No, they don't know what they're asking. Yeah. yeah. They'd be barfing that, probably. Guys. That's okay. <laughs> No problem. They'd probably be barfing if they, <laughs> they actually oh, yeah, did they would, see it. It would be horrible. If they knew about uh, Joanna, I always say this, people that also were in some of these programs that had their memory uh, wiped, if they knew half of the crap that they were involved in, they'd stick a gun to their head, you know, it's like, uh, or were around, you know, and uh, sometimes it's better that they did forget, but, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, with some of the stuff, I'm starting to regain memories myself. Um uh, you know, like the secret space program and everything and some of the slavery issues. And I can even, I can even go to some locations that I've actually physically located where some of this has taken place. It's just that one of them's on fire at the moment, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, a couple of the, you know, the buildings that some of this crap happened to me in the past happened to me. Some of them are actually burning at the moment. A couple of them are actually burning. So I was like, eh, okay, that, that's fine. But uh uh, but uh, not in a negative way. I'm just saying it's purging what took place there. A uh, couple of the other places, uh, I, I located at least maybe six physical locations that I found out I had actually been to in the in the secret space program on the Earth, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, and in some of those those programs. I can't. We couldn't. I was getting ready to actually go visit some of these places. But then the whole COVID thing hit, so we were kind of con- confined. Yeah, that that's just messed up everything. That's no doubt yeah. about that. I just feel like there there's a lot to um, more behind um, my own situation too than I'm even aware of. But I did notice that I have since you know I have started to remember a little more dreams than I ever did before, mm. and so it's it's slowly coming back a little bit. Um, but, that's good. Yeah, because I know you had that that whole area was uh, completely blocked before, you know. And then sometimes you have to you have to kind of give it a kick in the butt to get it to uh, start uh, opening up again. And that's uh, that's uh, well, that's when you brought me in there to to do that and some of the dream time abuse and all that's been going on. That's another area that has been just completely, uh, not completely riddled. I don't want to I don't want to jinx it, but. Uh, there's a lot of positive things in dreams and positive communications that take place. I always tell people, don't be spooked about going to sleep or in their in their dreams or anything, because there's not going to be a monster waiting for them. It's just that's where these beings sometimes yeah. like to harass people. That yeah. that's one thing I have to say. I haven't. I don't recall ever having any really nightmares or anything. I just like I didn't dream at all, and um, and everybody dreams, you know. <laughs> so that was always an issue uh, that I was trying to figure out. And like I said, it's starting to creep back a little bit more at a time. I feel like I'm starting to listen to my higher self a little more because I'm not questioning everything uh, like I always do, like I always doubt myself mm-hmm. um, or my well, higher self that's trying you're... to tell me something. <laughs> there's areas where you can question like as an in information goes and discern that. But, and then there's the area where, no, you don't question and doubt. That there's a there, there's a difference there. Somebody was asking me about that the other day in a session. It was like, uh, well, isn't, aren't I supposed to question everything? But yeah, and then they said, oh, but then they ended up doubting as a result of that on the opposite end of the spectrum. So I was like, yeah, question information over here, but then don't doubt over here. So you have to yeah. you, you, you find know. balance. Everything's about balance, isn't it? <laughs> mm. Wow. Okay. Well. Um, where do we go from here? Do you have any more? I'm just so thankful right now. I can't even tell you. <laughs> yeah, you're brighter. I can see you're much brighter, Ada. There's like uh, some color came back in your face. You've had a little bit of paleness before, but I, I actually can see there's a uh, color back in uh, in your uh, face and eyes and everything. So yeah, but uh, 
that that actually worked pretty worked pretty well. Sean and I, you uh, you and I make a good tag team, Sean. Well, you sure do. I mean, wow. <laughs> I'd have to awesome. schedule a session with both of you. <laughs> yeah, you do at the same it. time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I might, I might like to actually do that. I don't know if that's possible, but um, you affected a million Draco that were entangled with your. Um, I forget. I don't know what the rank of it is. It's like a whatever priest class in the Draco, and then uh, going into like being the head of a circle, and then the affecting large amounts of grids, and uh, has a DNA lineage, and your DNA lineage through them you affected a lot and turn on their love capacity. So good job. And then everyone else uh, that I was listening, thank you for being a part of that. And you, you helped too. You, you, <laughs> thank you for helping the big, that, that changed a lot of the timeline very quickly. Uh, wonderful unity, what everyone can do. So th thank you, Chris, mm -hmm. for helping her through that. And then uh, all these layers that just uh, are great visualizations that uh, spark the body's ability to, to, to do work through its supercomputer. For Australia, a lot. It's, it's, since it's a huge place, um, it can't be like surmised as all that, though I would definitely say um, uh, Queensland, Wales, and Victoria, Victoria especially with the Draco, uh, Melbourne, Sydney is the main point, and also Brisbane for Queensland uh the main draco hubs and there's like they're being oh, really? down there but they're oh. trying to control a lot of it oh, that's pretty cool. and i also see the there's these giant spiders that are also underground and as a few like I, I i i try to make spider piece with there's a lot of species underground but some some of the negative ones are, are around the area in wales and uh, Victoria, and then there's uh, raptors. They're mostly in uh, head point in Tasmania, but they also interact with the Draco. Um, and then the the demons, because they're tr trying to op open up portals to the main hell realm uh, that corresponds with uh, Midgard Earth realm in in the um, Tree of Life. Tree of Light is the angel angelic realms. Tree of Death. Killapoth being like the main anchor points for some of the other realms of the the hell realms. So, uh, and then uh, there's a lot uh, to expose some of these concepts. There's also a big AI grid there wow. as interacting with a thing I think people call Project Lucifer, which is like this uh, making a bunch of AI satellites that pretend to be stars up in the um whatever uh high up um and as a, like a grid and that uh to me acts like a big um cern uh, ai pulse wand for a lot of the dark people and also what the bunch of the beings are claiming to be lucifer which is like a constant battle uh and then uh between the different factions that believe they are that and the the representation of that being like the Wizard of Oz and then uh, like Oz, Australia, uh, being the man behind the curtain and then the big projector screen being this big powerful, uh, fearful of trying to put fear into things, uh, hologram that, is, that everyone's projecting their fear and worship at, that being the representation of Lucy. And then uh, it not being that at all, and then having all these aspects of it, and, and including all this is like over 50 uh, representations of things that people believe and uh, that believe themselves to be what Lucifer is, including uh, the head of the Draco, head of the Archons, the um, yeah, Enki, Enlil, the Fallen oh, Angels. You just the, said I'm, I'm sitting you know, here all, uh, yeah. The representation of, okay. of okay. consciousness of light for physical matter and this Venus of uh, Saturn, all uh, the same thing with yeah, the, you know, that, that's a question I have right, right based on that. And hold your question, Ida. Um, yes, the Saturn to the moon to the earth, 
was believed to be a mind control mechanism that was affecting people tremendously. Um, I'd like to know if you know anything about that, because it sounds like not only were we getting it from above, we were getting it from below as well in terms of sucking our energy and, and mind controlling us and putting us in this spell, more or less. Not all. I, I don't know how some of us have managed to uh, break free of it or why, how, how we, you know, not necessarily all of it, but uh, more so than others, you know, the ones that are totally asleep yet. Um, I mean, you know, I do, there are certain things I know that we can do, like, um, you know, watch your diet and what you drink and stuff like that, but nobody's perfect in that area anyway. Um, so it's not well, just as that. As far away from that as you can, uh, perfect as you can get from that. Cause, yeah, uh, so that, yeah. that's only a small, you know, very small portion of it all, I'm, I'm sure. It, it helps, but... Um, well, what would what, what, anybody who? Uh, Sean, you can answer that one first. Uh, go ahead. Well, like the Saturn and the yeah. moon grid? Thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we still being mind controlled? Yeah. I mean, it's uh, not the same layers previously because we're constantly becoming immune to it. So it's like a constant like chest move, like we said mm -hmm. before, where it's, they're trying to overtake. And it's mostly sourced from the light because they're the ones that have the ability and the authority and then the, the dark steals that. But And then the bringing up the shadow to heal the wounds of our self fractally. Uh, Saturn's, uh, again, the, the biggest, uh, the pr dark prince of the solar system. It's um, the one that's holding up the largest weight of darkness that's being coming at the solar system. It's compressing that down and uh, compressing that into its hell realms and other other things because it used to be a star and it, it kind of fell and to be in this game and um, a bunch of other things. So it's doing positive and negative stuff. The plant, a lot of the plants would be destroyed if Saturn wasn't here, but still, like you know, that insane uncle um, or whatever you want to call it, and the the mad Titan and and. You know, it has, uh, it has to distribute shadow to everyone in the solar system at a, like a kid boxing level that's less than what it would have if it wasn't here. And then, so it's constantly a problem, <laughs> but it's understandably that because it's it's compressing most of the problems that would be coming at us down into a little space. There was another thing that I heard just recently, and I'd like to know if you know anything about it. Don't forget what, you know, uh, Ida. Um, and that is about the wall that they talk about that was, you know, Trump created that, you know, got going. That was also has steel, you know, a steel. And I was listening to another show and they were saying that that actually stops other interdimensional beings from coming into our country. Do you know anything about that? Or is that true? Or have you heard anything? I heard, that? Uh, th that's very interesting. The thing about Saturn was interesting too. One thing I yeah. will say before I move on is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Saturn does like to argue with the other celestials periodically, I noticed. Uh, he tends to throw a temper tantrum periodically uh, <laughs> in multiple wavelengths. And uh, um, yeah, I, uh, uh, you know, a guide of ours named Isaac, he tends to just call, he just, he just basically calls him Satan. He just turns the, na the name Saturn around. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, what, uh, Very fitting. <laughs> what, uh, uh, also this thing with the, the wall, you know, uh, this is actually quite interesting. When I heard the plans surrounding this, I knew it was more than just the, you know, you're meeting the wall at the bottom of, of the United States. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, this is, uh, There's this a lot is more to it, to it than... I got a download about this, you know, uh, where. I felt like, yeah, it was being created for more than just immigration. Like it was trying to keep a certain aliens out of a certain yeah, area. Yeah, that's reptilians. Yeah, reptilians. And, uh, yeah. I, 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 I could see several types. It wasn't just interdimensionals. I could see interdimensionals kind of smacking into it. But uh -huh. at the same time, I've seen like giants, reptilians. I've seen other things hit it. Wow. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's so awesome. And people don't have yeah. a clue. They really don't. They think it's just for the immigration thing. So, yes. it, this is the immigration of interdimensionals and other, right. and other beings and so on. So anyway, go ahead, Ida. No, I would just wanted to ask. So this this being that we've heard of, like Anu, Enlil, Enki, can we 
like maybe shed some light, a little bit more light on who these beings are? And would you agree that everybody that was here in the beginning is here now on the planet to resolve um, uh, karma and um, so forth? Like, am I off or am I kind of? No, that's a great question. That's a good question. uh, now, I've always known like Anu is like Odin, like the, uh, you know, from uh, from uh, Scandinavian mythology. Uh, I have seen I've seen good aspects to Odin. I've seen bad aspects to Odin. Uh, and same thing goes with Enki and Enlil. Uh, I've seen that they have the ability to come back out of this, uh, all of this. Uh, like with Odin, for instance, I haven't you know, I haven't conversed with Odin in a long time. Uh, uh, well, I wouldn't say a long time. There was a intergalactic st- interstellar council, the Galactic Interstellar Council, I did, where he did come through to Viking at one point. You know, a friend of mine, Viking uh, co-host, um, he uh, he did come through with like a couple of visuals, but that was about that was about it. Now, do I believe they're they're all coming out of what took place in the ancient past? Yeah, I, I do believe they're resolving these cycles just like we are. Um, the, 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 I've seen evidence of that. I don't really converse with them too much. I, I like I said, Odin uh, slash Anu, I haven't spoken to in, in uh, some time actual conversation. Uh, uh, Enlil, uh, off and on. Um, Enki, it's been maybe about a year since I've heard from him. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's just interesting been, that you say you, that you, because uh, Penny Bradley um, talks about the Council of Five and they're being um, they're more or less on trial uh, or waiting for trial um, and to be dealt with uh, as a result of what they have imposed upon humanity without permission. Oh, yeah, I, uh, uh, I, I, you know, uh, I also noticed that there are some expressions of theirs uh, that I uh, interacted, say, with Enlil, for instance. We'll just use this as an example. Uh, I noticed that I had the ability to interact with a past version of him around the time of the flood. Let's just say I was, I was mm-hmm. looking at, at that time. Mean, evil as hell. But then later on, I synced the time up to talk to the current him, and it wasn't the same. It was like uh, it was like uh, he had lost some of that that uh, oh interesting had shed some of that uh, that tendency from him around that time frame and he was actually smaller than he was before and actually different than uh, slightly different than he was before had the same look face and everything wise but mm-hmm. it was like uh, uh, he had reduced in size and reduced in the rest of uh, this um, how can I put it just this baggage. And it uh, and, and the saying that uh, they're being put on trial there there is a, there is an accurate aspect to that because um, you can take those versions of them and, and you could say they're being put on trial for that galactically, but mm-hmm. yes. if they change like say if there's a, aspects that that's changed and move forward they're not going to look at that part they're just going to look at this the cycle that's being completed over here you know uh, I'm trying to make sense of this I'm trying to see if I can translate this uh, well enough. But what I'm looking at here, um, I'm actually getting the download as we're talking here. Uh, this aspect of them, of course, I feel there's a, a, I got a confirmation that they're being put on trial. But I'm seeing, I'm seeing two aspects here. I'm seeing this, this side, and I'm seeing this side. The side that's been transmuted and changed versus this other one that the rest of the galaxy is looking at. It's, uh, it's hard to describe beyond that, what I'm looking at here. Uh, that's, what, that's what I'm reading here. So would, so would you would you would you agree that or is there any relation to Enlil and Jesus? Are they the same being? I, I believe so. I uh, I started looking into that that uh, that past, and before the time of Jesus, I've noticed that uh, uh, you know Enlil was his the self we know we know historically as. And then I noticed when he started to shed, like I said, started to shed these different different aspects, the whole biblical God, you know, uh, persona. But those, those things stayed in the whole AI grid from what I could see. And the rest of him became what we know as Jesus. And, uh, and that's the being that I have interacted with is this, is this, this good changed version. Do I still see that as Enlil? No, because there was too much of a change over. There was too much of a flip. 
uh, for the sake of argument, I use the name multiple times, but the, it's this bulk, it's this dark bulk that you could still label as, as Enlil. It's it's a hard it's hard it's it's just weird conversion that he that he changed over from one to the other. He was actually healed. I heard he's going to go through another one where he's even going to lose the Jesus persona, uh, and uh, yeah, he's going to go through that. So because Joanna and I call this concept karma dumping, where a magician can take like say a, a bit of karma of theirs and dump it onto another person. What happened was what we noticed is Jesus became this big like karma dump, basically. So what he's going to do is shed that name and go over to something that's totally different. You know, go over to uh, another name, even as a human or whatever, you know, to uh, to actually completely shed that that persona, just like the end little persona got shed, uh, if that if that makes any sense. Uh, there's also other older beings that I've run across, like say Michael, for instance, or uh, several others that have gotten so entangled, they have to shed certain aspects. Archangel, of, Archangel Michael, is that who you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, he never really liked that, the term Archangel part. I, of, and I know I heard that but from someone else. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, and uh, so he, uh, so I noticed that with him as well, where that persona has to be, has to just kind of be cast aside and they have to transform into something else. And uh, it's like what we were discussing today, the transmutation, you know, and, and basically the changing of, of uh, them getting back, them back into the, the, that, that um, how can I put it, back into that heart state or that, that um, overall, I'm trying to describe this. It's still, somebody's trying to take it out of my head as I'm just trying to describe this. But uh, uh, what we were discussing today is essentially is what, we're, what I'm trying to say. Okay. Uh, you know, well, okay, um, so if, if, if y'all don't mind. Your volume is way down. Ida. Yeah, I can hardly hear you. I don't know why we've had that. Oh, great. Here we go. Seems like, okay, I'm going to have to re-enter. Yeah, it's there? very low. Yeah, weird. Okay. I'm not surprised. Yeah, neither am I. <laughs> um, but I was going to say, um, so it's been, and I'm just curious, said that the being known as Mary Magdalene has been put into nine different women on the planet. Sean, I know you know about this. Would you speak to that a little bit? Like, what is that whole, and that her energy, I mean, was she evil? Are y'all there? Are you still there? You're shut off there, Sean. There you go. Are you, so you're asking me about Mary Magdalene. Um, it's a very controversial topic, so I'll see what I can say. Um, okay, so my perception of people and sh uh, shared spirits and authorities and the games and the gods and the mythos that we have is fairly different, but open uh, to different angles of perception. Uh, most of the deities and beings and all that um, are not just one spirit in a body. Uh, they're multiple. Uh, and they're collectives in a body. And then they'll express, like, uh, to me, okay, uh, where is that collective existing elsewhere? And uh, where is each of those spirits branching off in other incarnations? And then being in multiple chess games around the planet, multiple spirits. Anytime I put a number on anything, um, it's what I'm allowed to see at the moment. Uh, so not to limit it or, um, let it, uh, to allow it to flourish past that. Cause we're constantly finding ways to grow past our limits and make more of ourselves to where we're doing as much as we can everywhere that going into, then you'll find some of the spirits in the collective will share entanglement with other, uh, games uh, light and dark will usually cross over because they'll that will be expanded in both, and uh, it's needed um, in the chess game and in that bravery as we go fully into life. Then we're brave enough to go fully into dark, and then vice versa, rise that darkness back into light. Um, and as they come together, it transmutes into a new expression of resilient light and love. Um, with its 
state of being strong and being able to hold up against because like the darkness will go into those dark creations like weapons and uh other things and that's still sourced from uh light but the light uh learns from dark to where it can maintain its light no matter what level of darkness it's in uh for magdalene i, I don't like usually talking about uh the christ consciousness or uh the magdalene lineages because they're very secretive and sought after and doing secret chess moves around the planet but yeah they're here they entangle with people and as uh people represent themselves in becoming their greatest self merging back with source or their divinity in their heart um and then become more than just one being in their being as an expression of the universe in unity in one body then that will be an individual expressing that uh being taught to be able to do that and do what is much needed on this planet from whoever it is based on entanglement back and forth in time and the goal is not to be um separating ourselves from the rest of the unity but to allow us to unfold into our full divinity without judgment on what we're becoming or labels being put on it uh as we can all see ourselves as christ or magdalene consciousness in that regard if we are willing to take up the responsibility uh, fully and then represent that and show with action uh, it fully. And that being expressed, not to take away from any anyone listening, I, I honestly uh, run into a lot of people that see uh, and, and feel the connection they have with other expressions of themselves as well as people and beings and deities and all, all that in our mythos. And that's fine. If you want to go into that, just make sure you know that you're not the only one. Uh, and that we, there are many that are growing more and more. Interesting. That's <laughs> fabulous. Yes. That's and then you have the power to do something that you have taken up and confidently um, believe in and, and grow in faith in yourself to something that can make immediate action that is needed here and in, in with without that project projection of doubt that likes to stop us in our tracks when we're coming up a, bi a big de darkness that like how do i assess myself even if if we can prepare ourselves to where not saying that this is that or anything but uh because we're going to keep facing that thing that challenges who we believe we are it's like if we can get to the state where we're okay if we we aren't what we believe anymore but we can go beyond what we believe we are um then that will be do you think we cling to some of these things in the past that we feel were an aspect of because for some reason we think that was um better than what we are now because it of the history behind it or something on that order or you know what I mean? Yeah. And that puts it external sourced, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I've been challenged with not wanting to be, not wanting to be, uh, connect. Yeah. Can Speak you hear loudly. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. I don't know I've either, but it you is. Know, there's, I've oh, heard so, that's better. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh oh, there we go again. There, it sounds better now. Yeah. Yeah, something's. Now you sound normal like you did before. Yeah. yeah. Well, it went way down there for a little bit. I think, yeah, I'm. I'm pretty confident that. I'll just. I'm done with. I just was curious. I. I'm. I just want to really step up in a big way, and help however i can and serve however however i can you already do that i do in case you don't know it i've seen some i know but sometimes i feel like i'm not doing enough like there's just i'm not doing enough i'm i'm like there's something more i need to be doing that's that's how i feel that's a good there's one something more that i need to be doing and i'm not looking to be anybody but but who i am here now mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say that just be you in the here and now. 
you know. That's, uh, that's it. But I've had, there's been a little bit of a, um, a schism, if you will, because I've had, I'm not going to say so many people, but probably two hands full of people that have just seen my picture or seen me and I get contacted and told, you know, stuff about past life and whatever. And it's just, um, it's, I've, I've, and, and I, I could very be very much be, have a wrong, the wrong perspective about it, but I've convinced myself that Jesus and Mary Magdalene were involved in some very satanic, horrific things which has caused me to deny an aspect of myself instead of being able to integrate and fully um, like release, release it and not have it keep playing this tape in my head or this constant looping of this stuff. Like I wake up in the morning and it's like, I, I don't want to think about this. <laughs> Well, what you do is you take the aspects of it, the, just, to, just to clear that you're taking the aspects of it that are actually for your highest good in the current moment and, and discard the rest of it. Because usually uh, usually whatever happened then that was, that was really horrific or bad that you're actually picking up on, somebody is trying to replay that tape over and over again. Just basically just kind of quarantine it and just cast that aside and keep what, what matters now. Thank you, Chris. I know this in my heart. Like I know this and from our it's last validation. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, you know, I I don't want to talk about it. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. There was another question I wanted to ask. I was um, under the impression again from someone else. I can't say that I know this for myself, but um, that Baffinet was actually executed in that um, um, Council of Five as a result of things that he had done. And Moloch will also be on trial. But Moloch, the, yeah. Moloch, yeah, he, he just hasn't been, you know, on trial yet, but he's, he's going to go too. But, but from what I understand, uh, the only thing was that I noticed that in that yeah. session that that woman gave, I don't know what her name is, um, off the top of my head, but I, the one I sent to you, it mm -hmm. sounded like she was describing Baphomet. Oh Is there God. more than one? <laughs> I just want to, can I, do y'all mind my beautiful Leah? Come here for a minute. Sorry. Say hi. Hi. Oh, hello. Hello. How are you guys? Good, good. Good. Amazing work for um, child trafficking. And Channel 4 News contacted her to do it. I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Yeah. Channel Four News contacted her to do an interview for all her hard work for helping with save save our children and child trafficking. Mm. Yes. Awesome. Love you for that. Awesome. Working on it. Hopefully, we can make a difference. Very good. Very good. I used to say that all my life, way back when. <laughs> I just want to make a difference. Uh, <laughs> yeah, doing, uh, that's what uh, I came to her. <laughs> but anyway. What is she doing saving children? Sorry. I just like do marches and stuff. I started a Facebook group, but I'm like partnering up with a CBD company, which like we, she actually helped me the other day. We went to Riverside to sell them, but a hundred percent of these free rolls goes to save our children. They're like $10 a piece. And then he's donating 30% of all proceeds. So I'm basically going to be running his like Instagram, all that stuff. And he's like paying me to run that stuff, but I can promote it. And then um, obviously the hundred percent of the pre-rolls are going straight there. And then 30% of all profits too. So. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, and I try, I'm trying to like organize marches too, but I just have a lot of stuff going on right now. I'm trying to get my real estate license. So I have that, my test coming up. So trying to. So is this a organization that, um, when well, when you say the the fine the money is going to this organization, where yeah. is this organization? Who's in charge of this organization? It's called Operation Underground Railroad, but we're at, we're actually going to be like just doing that for this month because they're pretty well established right now. They actually go in and like fight and everything like that. And there's a whole documentary I can have her like send you guys about it, which is really interesting. But 
we're actually partnering up with a different one. Um, it's not really partnering up. It's just donating to them, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. but um, probably like her song in Jacksonville. And then the other one you were talking about, um, I don't really know. I just, I just want, I'm just questioning that because I know so many of the charitable organizations don't always do what, you know, I heard of the you want them to do. What did you say, Sean? I heard of the underground real world part. That, that's good. great work. Thank you. Good. Fantastic. Can't hear you at all now. Must be your mic. Yeah. I don't know why. What's it seems that your mic is very narrow. Whenever you move the computer, it only it's a, who whoever your computer is aimed at. It seems to uh, yeah. You have to just like with my microphone, and I just found this out not too long ago. I didn't know that I can't have it off to the side to me because then my my voice will sound muffled. I have to have it pretty much right in front of me because. So can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Operate. I mean, uh, I'm sorry. Um, oh, you are Foundation Operation Underground Railroad. No, but what was the other one? Oh, her song. Her song, uh, Gail, you'll appreciate this. All of you will. Uh, they get women out of um, sex trafficking mm. and they awesome. get them off the streets and help them and house them, house them teach them different skill sets. And I've actually um, emailed them hoping that I would they would contact me so that I could, you know, work as a mentor or, or somehow support these women and you know yeah if you guys are interested too just let me know if you guys like cbd i mean i smoke it every day they can't do anything John about that one back and like chill and if and you the want it and i can give you a 20 percent off discount code too. louder 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 <laughs> i love her yeah okay. louder can we hear you louder yeah, it's hard. Get you guys twenty percent off discount code. Can you hear me? Yeah, better. Uh, so yeah, you have to you speak. Any, yeah, right. if you want anything off his website, it's a local company from Jacksonville, so it definitely helps them out. Um, and yeah, you can get twenty percent off, and you can whatever thirty percent of all proceeds this month will be going to OUR. Next month will be either her song or this other one that he was telling me about that houses them, and then they start a retail shop and they have them work there to like make money, and it's it's really cool. So. Yes. That's awesome. That's wonderful yes. to know that somebody's doing something about that. Yeah. Kind for, of thing. for sex trafficking, people. teaching them other skill sets so that they can live a productive life and at least mm. to get off the streets, get them cleaned up, get their mind right, get them, you know, possibly counseling or whatever it is that they need to to help these women live a product, productive life. Yeah. So there's the also um, sending this to all these people Chris or Sean. Take it all down. Hmm? They have the keys to the, the the dark secrets, the back doors of the dark system, and have the ability to rip it all down, uh, both physically, spiritually, as they reclaim their power. Um, it comes back stronger and with great resilience to them, and they can do so much uh, spiritually to curve the planet towards a greater future. That's awesome. Yeah, because they have so much pain and suffering to overcome. And they can transmute that all into strength and um, yeah, yes, because it makes you a stronger person when you know when you survive it. I mean, I hate to say, put it that way, but it really does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. my story is I've never shared my full story, but you got that right. Yep, nor have I. <laughs> my whole life is completely turned around, and mm -hmm. I'm very grateful and thankful. And Sean and Chris, I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate your help today, Gail. Thank you for allowing them to to help me with that today. I think it's great for the audience to be able to see. Um, and yeah, you two working together is pretty freaking awesome. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I want to schedule a session with you too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I would love to have all y'all on my show. And pretty great too. Yeah. You know, yeah. That would be lovely to invite you guys on my show. I'm going to be interviewing this young lady. I just really want to touch, reach out and reach people's hearts and, and let people know that change is possible, healing is possible, um, and that coming together, no matter what species you believe yourself to be or what culture, religion, whatever it is your belief system is, that ultimately, if we can connect with our heart and come together like we are, like we're doing here today, um, night. Yeah, it's it's so beautiful. It's such a lovely 
space to be in and all the other nonsense that's, you know, play, you know, right now is, uh, I know I've heard Andrew Bardis say this at, at where we're able to come together in no time and do this kind of, have this kind of discussion and, uh, you know, just being spontaneous or I know it was a planned uh, interview, but, or, you know, discussion, but I'm just saying just to be able to connect it from our hearts and really, you know, choose to, choose to, um, to heal. I think healing is a choice. Some people don't want it. I think. Oh, I think but you're I, right. I think you're right. I think people just don't want to do the work and, and I've, feel like I've been guilty. Not, it's not that I, I do want to do the work. I just don't know what, you know, I live in the show. Yeah. It's like, so, <laughs> so then I just have to sit still, get silent and say, okay, what is this that I'm feeling? And a lot of times I don't know how to identify how I'm feeling. I don't know how to identify how I'm feeling because I think that I've left my body so many times or just from everything that I've experienced that I'm learning to be, I do my best to ground myself and be in my body rather than wanting to, um, you know. All right, then. I think we've covered just about as much as we can cover on this session yeah. because it's going to be too long to process this all. Yeah. So. <laughs> this is amazing. And I believe you're going to get a lot of people are going to appreciate this. Uh, I hope so because these guys shared amazing information today and I'm, I'll probably be, you know, processing for a few days for sure. <laughs> yes, indeed. Amazing. Um, and I want to thank every one of one, everyone who's here, including your friend, and have her send a link to what she's involved with, and I can put it in the description. Also, I need links from you, Chris, and I need links from you, Sean, for, so I can get everybody's links in the description. I can't guarantee people to look at them, but I think they have in the past. So um, thank you very much, y'all. And I think I we've covered so much, it's a lot for people to take in. But I hope they do because it's it's important we all need to heal on an individual thank basis you, Sean. I thank you Chris. thank you yeah, yeah. we do nice and to meet you guys by the way yeah, yeah. as we do that then that helps to heal other people yeah it starts with us that's right that's right i agree all right then you guys all have a wonderful rest of the day and yes. thank you so thank you. much for participating thank you. Thank you. It's good talking to you too again, Sean. Too. Yeah, it was cool to bring you guys together. We might have to do this again too. And you do it too. Right? <laughs> kind Sean, of... you're muted. We can't hear you. Oh, that's why. I thought I was. Uh... Yeah, we didn't hear you. <laughs> you missed everything you said. What'd you say? Um, I, oh, yeah. Get, everyone, thank you so much. Uh, honored to be in this call. Lovely to meet you. We'll stay connected. And uh, uh, thank you, audience. Love you very much. And uh, yeah, keep giving yourself nurturing, self-love, uh, healing to the level that your higher self uh, requires or whatever uh, your inner self, your I am, to where the parts of you that are not fully um, awake because of like wounds from the past or inherited or whatever, to where it can awaken fully. And as we all awaken within ourself in that, that dormant uh healing part of herself to shine out that light it will heal everything else and awaken the land uh like the continents such as australia uh which is in a form of awakening and is needed to uh go through and it's like a big chest move to the dark to try to keep that held back so and then and like that is seen on the macro level with the the pedo rings again you know, coming up to the surface and there's a lot of suing battles with like the Jehovah's Witness there and some other right. things. It's get, pretty nice. But, uh, yeah, bringing its heart to awaken fully and feel, not just its brain. I don't want you to feel like you have to see here. points of the ley lines that produce awakening energy and we can have the whole population rise up with it as cells in the body. Thank you, Sean. That's a wonderful ending comment for you. you want to do, would you like to say something to um um, Christopher, <laughs> on that order. Yeah, thank you for, for having me on. You know, uh, I 
uh, you know, I agree with Sean there. You know, it's it's uh, everything's transmuting right now. Everything is completely changing on its head, or from the perspective of people, it's collapsing, but it's actually transforming into something better, something that we uh, we can all find uh, palpable, all find uh, loving and balanced. Uh, and it may not seem like that at the moment, but, but what's going on right now, as uh, my, my friend Viking and I always talk about, it's something that was needed to awaken the masses and uh, awaken to what was going on from the child trafficking to uh, the Draco involvement to the cabal to everybody. You know, uh, uh, it, it was what was needed to bring this out in the open. You know, uh, the, this is about, you know, Joanna, I always say this is about a band aid rip as you're going to get at the moment uh, with the uh, disclosure uh, because uh, uh, any more than this, some people's heads would explode. So it's, uh, uh, mm-hmm. you know, this is about, well, about the processing level uh, people can handle at the moment. And uh, as much as I want to speed this along myself, I tend to get impatient from time to time too. Uh, uh, I want to uh, speed this along. It's where it needs to be at the current moment in time. Uh, so uh, that's it's all in I- divine timing, right? <laughs> Joanna always, uh, she's always correcting me going, oh, would you stop that? You know, or something like that. You know, because I'll complain about something or I'll see something <laughs> online and it's like, oh, would you stop that? They are where they are. You know, something like that. You know, she does that. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I completely agree. You know, people are where they are, you know, and it's where it needs to be at the moment. So mm-hmm. thank you for okay. having me on. Well, sometimes the darkness helps to cataprod the light to, to shine brighter. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> okay. Do you have any last words, Ada? You're, you're muted. <laughs> Oops, sorry. I asked you to unmute. Mute. Yeah, you're muted for some reason. I'm trying to unmute you, but it's not. <laughs> I can't unmute you for some reason. Now, now I can. Yeah. Okay. I just want to give I you one said, last word. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you. To, to all of you, and uh, that's it. I've, I've said enough today. Okay. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Bye, everyone, and thank you so much for your time and energy and, and the wonderful things you said. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Yep. Bye. We're not recording anymore, so I don't know if anybody had anything you else. You guys there. rock. Thank you. I was trying to – I know my mind's all over the place. I'm no, yeah. you're fine. Yeah. Gail, thank you so much for making, you know, inviting all of us. I knew these two guys were, when, when I knew this was the best. They rock. They rock. There's no doubt about yes, that. They do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you guys awesome. make a great team. You really do. <laughs> you really do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really well. yeah. All right. Well, I can get up now and go and take a couple drags off my cigarette. You guys are going to be here for a minute. I'll be back. <laughs> Well, I think I'm going to go because I got to try to get this thing processed. Yeah, so. I, I got to take off too. You know, well, I got to get, uh, I make dinner when Joanna is late. So I, uh, I do all that. So, uh, awesome. uh, we'll be doing that. It was good talking to you you guys again. It's good talking to you, seeing you, Sean. Uh, we'll talk soon. Glad that you're doing well. Yeah. I'm doing a lot better than when you saw me that first time though. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> One day I want to be like Sean. Sean is so laid back and chill and. Oh, that's sweet of you. I, I mean that. I, 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 want to be, I want that. Although I do appreciate my fun. I'm a very fun. I love to joke and talk crap and all you that. You got whole parts of your puzzles that I can't wait to get as well. Uh, well, okay. So I'll be reaching out to y'all. You know, my, my show is new, but I would love to have y'all on. I'll see if we can get jo- Joanna on too, and then Sean can be there, and everybody, everybody can interact too. Yeah. Well, why don't we do that? So keep that in mind. I'll reach out to you, Chris. I'll reach out to you, Sean, Gail, if you're interested. But definitely I will be interested. Joanne. I certainly will. Yes, I definitely want to meet Joanne. Joanne's a huge I part do too. of your whole. You got to check out some of their their uh, videos on YouTube uh, of um, Chris and Joanne and his mother. His mother's amazing. Anyways, um, all right, guys. I love you guys. I mean that. Yep. Yeah, and Sean, I want to connect with you. I have a cigarette. Sure. Yeah, let me know. All things going. I got to head out, but really uh, great seeing you guys. And we'll have to uh, chat again, and it'll be fun. And we'll 
um, do some things for the planet, some team ups. We already did some stuff, but like, like pretty impressive with the levels that we've done. So I can't imagine when we have a uh, focus, it'll be intensified. Um, if we, you know, if you guys feel like it, whatever. It's, it's um, awesome. I, I, this was great. Uh, I, I hope it helps people and I'm sure it will. So thank you so much yeah. again. See you guys. Take off. Uh, see you guys soon. I'll be in touch Bye-bye. for both of you guys. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Hello, everyone. This is Gail of Gaia. I'm the founder and producer of Free Range. I do my best to bring you the best in guests and information that's very relevant to you today. I'm making this short little clip today in order to ask you to please contribute to the channel. I'm not monetized by YouTube. I don't sell any products and I don't have Patreon. So I depend upon your contributions and I know everyone's having a tough time, but even a small amount from a number of people would help tremendously. So thank you. Please contribute. And again, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I do need your help. Thank you. This Free Range Productions program is presented for information purposes only. The opinions expressed may not necessarily reflect the opinions of the hosts, Free Range Productions, its principal supporters or staff. Viewers are directed to use their own research and discernment with respect to any information presented here.